Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for MLU Live. I'm Chris Markowitz, and alongside Burt Katzen, we're bringing you coverage of tonight's Western Conference matchup between the Seattle Rainmakers and the Vancouver Nighthawks. Seattle enters this game at 4-2 this season. They're on a four-game winning streak and sitting in second place out in the West. Vancouver enters tonight at 1-6 this year, but they got their first win last week in a thrilling 21-20 double overtime victory. Bert, what are the kind of things you expect to see in tonight's matchup? Uh, you know, I'm really excited for, uh, for this game. I think both of these teams do an excellent job of handler movement, so I expect that uh, both offenses will be flowing freely sideline to sideline, and that's really uh, what, what really helped Vancouver last week. Yeah, you mentioned Vancouver's handler movement. They have three handlers who are actually in the top three in catches this season. Uh, as we take a look at the weather for tonight's game out in Vancouver, it's 57 degrees, a little bit of wind, 7 miles per hour, some humidity, 68%, 48% precipitation. Uh, Bert, let's take a look at our players to watch for tonight's game. For sure. Yeah, our first player, Henry Fan, creative, consistent handler. Um, Henry Fan has really developed over the last couple of years. He's been a, a consistent part of this of this Rainmakers team. And, and what you really see on, on a lot of MLU teams is a handler on the defensive line that keeps the or keeps the the offense after the turn going and really is uh, you know the primary consistent look and the person they rely on. And and Henry's been doing that now. This is his third season in that role, and he's really really starting to to blossom into it. Yeah, they're certainly going to need a lot from Fan tonight as their key player, El Salam, is out for tonight's game playing in college. Is that, is that right, Bert? Yeah, uh, Khalif will not be playing tonight. Um, but this, this Seattle team has, a, has a, ton of, a ton of depth and a ton of really well-rounded players. Actually, something I'm, I'm going to touch on later for sure. All right, moving on to Vancouver. Who's your player to watch for them? Uh, player to watch for, for, for uh, Vancouver is Eric Hunter. Uh, and he's really been, you know, along with two other guys – the veteran core of this Nighthawks team. Whenever you know it's it's a really young roster, and whenever they've they've gotten into trouble and have needed someone to bail them out, Eric Hunter has really answered the call. Thirty-one points this season, leads the team in goals and assists, is second on the team in throws, third in points in the MLU. He's just been um, you know a, a bit of a hero for this for this Nighthawks team so far this season. Yeah, you talk about his numbers. He's actually third in the league in points with thirty-one, and has the fourth most goals with seventeen. Moving on to these teams, what do you have as, uh, as the keys to the game for Seattle? Seattle has, uh, you know, they're, they're three keys to this game. They haven't lost to not Portland. So out of all their games in the West, they're 4-0 versus everyone except for Portland. Um, Portland looks like they're going to run away uh, with first place this year. Uh, Seattle lose tonight, I believe that, that clinches that. Yep, um, that would make, mathematically make them the one seed. But they, they have the inside track at going to the playoffs, and this Seattle team has shown in years past and this year that you know they're a team that, that gels as the season goes on, and they can definitely steal that championship bid from Portland. They've done it. They did it last year. They could definitely do it again this year. All right, what about uh, this Vancouver Nighthawks team coming off their first victory? Yeah, so, so <laughs> Vancouver should be feeling great. I talked a lot about it last week when I called the game. Uh, about how it's a young team that really rides their momentum. When the momentum's high, they're they're playing really great. When they when they lose momentum, uh, it seems like they can't do much of anything at all. So I liked to see how they start this game coming off of a really impressive win over San Francisco last week. I, I think they can they can definitely make some noise today. Yeah, they're coming off that win, and they had a game a few weeks ago back on May 7th where they played Seattle all the way to the fourth quarter. They were only trailing by one point entering the fourth quarter, kind of just lost pace with them. Uh, they were they were outscored in that fourth quarter, five to one. They only lost by five, though. So let's see if they can keep up with uh, Seattle tonight. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The team dynamic is just to have as much fun as possible. It's an experience, man. You turn around and you look and there's this big giant animal running towards you. When I first started commentating, it was kind of tough for me because it's like, well, I can be out there too. I can play with these guys. Well, why am I up here in the booth? Jeff Grant is, is he's a freaking monster. Uh,
And we're back. Chris Markowitz alongside Burt Katz, and we've got Seattle Rainmakers at Vancouver Nighthawks tonight. Burt, this is going to be an exciting one. Yeah, definitely really excited to see both these teams. Um, Seattle, like I said before, relentless and efficient. Uh, you know, they'll make you pay anytime you turn the disc over. Is something that, that really sets this team apart from other teams in the West and other teams in the league is, is how efficient they are at scoring on both sides of the disc, which I think, you know, reflects their their depth and their well-rounded talent. A lot of teams in the MOU, they're filled with specialists. They're filled with, they're filled with, with people who are excellent at one or two facets of the game, but not necessarily well-rounded ultimate players. The Seattle team is contrary to that. They All of their players contribute to different phases of the game. So, you know, in order for Vancouver to, to stick around in this game, they're going to need to be very, very efficient with the disc. Uh, Seattle actually holds the break advantage on Vancouver in their games this year, 33-9. to nine. Um, So so Vancouver's obviously going to have to do better than that if they want to compete in this one. Definitely. But you mentioned Seattle. They're on this four-game winning streak, but I can't help but notice – they, that streak started when Khalif El Salam joined this team. They started the season 0-2. So how much of a difference is his absence going to make on tonight's game in, in the way that Seattle plays here tonight? Yeah, see, our Khalif is definitely a player uh, that, they, that they'd love to have, obviously. Um, he's a real catalyst for their offense. Just a dynamic thrower and downfield presence. Makes plays seemingly all over the field. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's foolish for me to say that, that they're not going to miss him, but I do think that they have the talent on the squad. Brad Hauser, um, Clay Dewey-Valentine, Evan Klein, uh, Peter Ostergaard. The, the names go on and on. This, this Seattle team is loaded with, with players who, who are, you know, comfortable with, with the spotlight being on them. Certainly, certainly. Hauser off having a phenomenal season. He's got 27 goals this year. And then you look at Vancouver. We already talked about Eric Hunter, but Nadon's having a good year for them, and they look, really look to be gelling in that last game. Absolutely. And, and going back to what we were talking about with Henry Fan, how, how Henry Fan has driven that defensive line, Graham Barber on the Nighthawks is starting, to, is starting to take that role as well. This Nighthawks team, their main issue – into the season, you know, first or through their first six games and something they changed in their last game uh, was their defensive scoring efficiency. It was lower than the rest of the, rest of the league by far at 17%. Last game, they upped that all the way to 30%, mm -hmm. which is, you know, their season high. And a lot of that has to do with Graham Barber being that catalyst on the turn. He had five assists in that game. So you know, hopefully they'll keep him in that role. I think, I think that, that that change will, will be a great way to combat, um, you know, the scoring efficiency issues they've had in the past. Yeah, you mentioned Grab Barber having, you know, being helping them out scoring on breaks, but Mitchell Dazi Daigle is actually having a pretty great season for them, Vancouver. He's got nine blocks this year, which is third in the league. Yeah, I hope to see a lot more of Mitchell than we did last week. Uh, he's an extremely, extremely smart defender. He always seems to find himself in the right position, and this Vancouver team in general is very, very energetic and relentless on in-cuts, which I think has served them well throughout the season. But like I said before, the issue has been turning those into breaks, Dazi Daigle, no different than a lot of the other players on Vancouver's D-line. He has had trouble uh, finding the end zone. So um, hopefully having Graham Barber, or Graham Barber on, the, uh, on the offense will, ha will help them. Or, I mean, on the defense will help them when they, when they switch to offense. Excuse me. And, uh, and, you know, I'd like to see them do the same thing. I, I can't see any reason why they'd switch it up, but you never know till the game starts. Yeah. Uh, we've certainly seen a lot of improvements this year from this Vancouver team. Uh, obviously, they got their first win last week, but even in the losses, it seemed like they were improving game in after ga uh, and game out. Is that something with with a young team that has a bunch of rookies? And is it are are they going to be exciting to look forward to watch next year? Absolutely, I think this Vancouver team has a ton of talent and a ton of promise, and their main issues have come because of that youth and that inexperience in certain situations, getting pressured into some throws, dropping the disc when they're looking upfield too soon. Things that are extremely fixable and sort of come with the new environment of playing for, you know, on the top level for Major League Ultimate. And as you've seen, week over week, they've, they've grown leaps and bounds. And just because they, they only got their first week last season does not make them a formidable opponent. There's, there's plenty of talent on this team. Mm -hmm. And if they're gelling, they're, they're just as tough to stop as any other team in the league. Yep, and if Vancouver's gelling, you could certainly say the same about Seattle, winning four in a row. Those first two losses came against Portland, too, the strongest team out in West. Yeah, and they, and they put up a good fight in those games, Chris. It's tough, it's tough to start the season off against Portland, who's, who's really given this entire division a tough time for three years now. But, but Seattle knows 
and they proved it last year that just be, just because they can't get those wins against Portland in the regular season doesn't mean that they can't get it done when when the championship's on the line and it's and it's time to to play for the MLU championship game. So, you know, really their season is all about building that chemistry and utilizing their depth as much as possible so that they're they're ready for when the big moment comes. Yeah, certainly. They're putting it, it seems like they're putting everything together. Um, a win here tonight would keep them alive, actually, for first place hopes out west. But that would take a lot for them to get that. Portland would have to lose out, I believe. Uh, Portland would have to lose again. No, they'd have to lose out because they already have the advantage in the head-to-head yeah, matchup. Yeah, they already have they already have both those wins that they need. I would be very surprised to see Portland, uh, you know, come out in second place in this division. But but I I don't think Seattle can can rest on their laurels either. San Francisco still has two more games against them, uh, and I know you know San Francisco didn't really put on the best showing last week against the Seattle team, but uh, it's anything can happen. It's sports, so yep. I, I I definitely wouldn't wouldn't go crowning Seattle the uh, the playoff spot just yet. As you see, players warming up in the field, we're just about ready to get things started here. It's got a got a Western Conference matchup: Seattle Rainmakers versus the Vancouver Nighthawks. Yeah, uh, really a, a perfect day for Ultimate, in my opinion. A little bit more precipitation than you'd like to see, but Vancouver's been really blessed this, this over these past couple of weeks with with perfect temperature and light wind. Seven-mile-an-hour winds, um, you know, it will have a little bit of an effect on the disc, but nothing too drastic. All these players very, very capable of, of utilizing just about every throw that they have in that in that type of environment. Yeah, it looks like it, it's going to be a little rainy out there too, though, Bert. Is that going to have an effect on, on catches potentially? Most of these players, I, I want to say no, but uh, but Vancouver's had a penchant for dropping the disc this year. Most of these players in the rain, they'll, they'll tend to put on either either a, a drying substance like Gamer Grip or or gloves, and in that sense, to to really alleviate any any concerns about about rain. Yeah, these guys are pros. You know, they're gonna, they're going to be able to get it done out of there on the field. We'd like to take this time to remind you that MLU is sponsored by Canterbury. Canterbury, the performance apparel partner to Major League Ultimate. Visit www.canterburyus.com today, the destination for your team's custom uniforms. Canterbury, committed to Ultimate. And we see there, we got Vancouver huddling on the right of your screen. They're about ready to go. Uh, we'll see who's pulling and whatnot. What do, you, uh, what do you look to see here early on from this Vancouver team, Bert, both offensively and defensively? So last week, Chris, they, they did a great job, as I said. They've always done a great job with their handler movement, but have, have had difficulty really utilizing the entire width of the field. A lot of their handler movement would come on uplines or dumps, and they wouldn't be able to get those swings across. It'd mm-hmm. just be dumps and then you know, 10, 15-yard throws up the field in, into tightly contested areas. Uh, they really figured out a way to use that extra space last week, and it paid huge dividends for this O-line, and it really started to gel as the game went on. So if they can limit the turnovers, they're going to need to limit the turnovers against the Seattle team because they're they're not forgiving. They're not going to give the disc over very often. Um, and if they can if they can limit their turnovers and keep the disc moving side to side, that's that's really uh, you know the the key to success for them. Yep, that'll be their key on offense. But they'll be starting this game on defense as we see them on your screen here in their red uniforms. They'll be playing right to left on your screen to Seattle. And it looks like no Graham Barber out there, Chris which surprises me a little bit given his effectiveness on the D-line last year – or last week, sorry. Yeah, he was very effective in, uh, in those scoring situations on breaks, as you mentioned. Uh, but maybe they just want to give him a little rest at the start of this game. We'll see if he's out there later. Who's that there set to pull? I think that's Ryan Hoy, Chris. Yeah, that's Ryan Hoy. New to our rosters here. Hoy. Send it off a low pull here. Close to the far sideline, it's going to die out. It's a short pull there, Bert. Yeah, it's short and low. It's not really what you want to set up your defense. Let's see. Let's see how they how they set up. Seattle with it now, working in the middle of the field. Oh, that's an early turn here. Let's see if Vancouver can capitalize, Bert. This is the type of situation you really want Graham Barber out on the field. And a throw into the end zone, and that is a score. That. Oh, let's see. It's just short of the end zone. That's Lee Ross with the disc. Looking for a man. He dumps it. That's, Ma- that's Mogollon. Into the end zone, and that's going to be his score with, to Lee Ross. He gets it right back, Bert. Wow. San Francisco started the game 
or uh, excuse me, Vancouver started the game with a break last week against San Francisco. They do it again with Seattle here. Like I said, then this is the type of team that you don't want to let get momentum. They're they're a team that that really rides those highs. So so surprising, surprising turn of events for the first point for Seattle. Uh, let's see if they can shake it off and, and punch in the hole this time around. Yeah, not the start Seattle wanted there as they turned the disc over literally on the first throw, maybe within the first two or three seconds of their possession there. Yeah, and it's curious to see considering uh, the type of pull that they threw didn't really allow Vancouver a ton of time to set up their defense downfield, which, is, which normally indicates uh, you know, an easy first two to three throws. That clearly wasn't the case. It looked like they had nothing going and then a hand block was all she wrote. Yep, and, the, and an easy score for Vancouver on the other side. As another short pull goes off here for Vancouver, Seattle takes over. They'll work to, look to work it quickly. That's Daniel Greeley with it. A couple fakes. He gets off a backhand, has a wide open man. That's Gussin with it. Click. Back to Greeley. Greeley wide open now. Now the mark comes. He fakes a backhand. It's a double. And that's going to be another turn. Vancouver looking to capitalize here. They'll work it. Just a careless drop there. Yep, and now Vancouver working off the drop. That's Lou into the end zone, and another score, and Vancouver is quickly up 2 nothing on two breaks here, Bert. That's Kevin Chu with the score. Oh, man, Vancouver is feeling good. Between last week and this week, they are, they are cruising right now, and, San, and Seattle is not, is not doing themselves any favors. That was a careless drop there by Chris Rupp, looking upfield before he had the disc secured. Uh, Seattle just looks sloppy right now, Chris. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, could, do you attribute any of that to the defensive effort from Vancouver? Is it something that they're doing? Have you noticed anything early on? Are they poaching off maybe? Or Vancouver they... all season has done a great job of just being aggressive and, and high energy on their marks, um, which can create a little bit of an uncomfortable atmosphere for throwers. Uh, but I, I don't see them doing schematically anything anything out of the ordinary that they've done all season. Nothing that should be catching Seattle off guard. Yeah, it is just early on. Maybe it just could be some rust. Let's see if Seattle can get things going here, um, get their first offensive score, as Vancouver will pull right to left on your screen again. 8.53 remaining in the first quarter. Vancouver's already up to a 2 nothing lead. This pull travels right to left. Got a little more hang time on it than the last two. Seattle takes over. They'll work the middle of the field. That's Feely. He has a sliding man there. That's Hauser with a nice grab. No mark. Back to Feely. Feely with a couple fakes. Now he flicks it. A high floaty flick, but it's going to be caught there. But that was nearly another turnover, Bert. Yeah, they're they are looking a little jittery with the disc right now. As that's 44 on the sideline. Gussin, a couple fakes. Back to Feely. He's marked now. Has a man on an in cut. That's Silva, and Silva's going to turn it over here. Vancouver looking to capitalize yet again. Quick throw to the close sideline. That's locked him, Lamb, with it. He has a man in the middle of the field. That's Chan. Now Chan floats it out to space. He has a man on the far sideline. Now a throw to the far sideline. They're working it really well here, Vancouver. Like I said before, they're really using that break sideline space, and when they do, they are a tough offense to stop, like most offenses when they're using all that width. Yeah, and now we get a call here. Was that a foul there, Brett, Bert? Yeah, a bit of, a, bit of an aggressive layout. Uh, took his legs out from under him, and, and this is a, a really advantageous position for the Nighthawks. Now Lamb with a lefty backhand and a score. That's number 16, Graham Barber, and Vancouver is up to a 3 nothing lead all on breaks. Vancouver is feeling it right now, Chris. Seattle, clearly not. Uh, I, I would like to say that this is something that I expect to continue, but, but Seattle's got a, a strong veteran group. Uh, I don't think they're going to overreact here. They know that all, or all but one of the turns have been their own fault. You know, they, they did get that one hand block. Or Vancouver got one hand block on the first point, but these last two points are, are simple communication issues. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's hope that Seattle can keep a level head about this. Uh, and let's hope Vancouver doesn't and really, and really rides that momentum and, and makes them pay. Yeah, this is one of the better starts we've seen this Vancouver team get off to this season. Probably the best start they've yeah. gotten all, all year long. Yeah, last week they started the game with two breaks. This game they're starting with three. Uh, they, they've shown a penchant for, for being a nuisance at home. They haven't gotten blown out here. Uh, and this is, this is a great game so far for them. And that was your man Graham Barber on the, uh, on the other end for the score as Seattle takes over. It's Feely with it. He gets a man. Gussin. Now back to Feely in the middle of the field. To the close sideline. That's Rupp. Rupp back to Feely. 
Gilly to the middle of the field, has a man. That's Silva. Silva over to the sideline to Gusson. Vancouver doing a great job of keeping these throws short here, Bert. That's yeah, him. like I said before, they're really squeezing down on the space. Yeah, not a lot of room downfield for these uh, cutters. As Gusson with the disc now on a swing. Flick to the middle of the field. Has a man, Silva. He hits Klein. Klein now with a flick to a man. That's Gusson. Gusson throws it in the end zone. And a layout grab. And I think that's going to be a score for number 14, Daniel Greeley. Yeah, and the rain is really coming down there now. Oh, are, are they saying he's out of bounds there? Yeah, yeah they're going to say like that's a turnover. Looks like they're calling him out. I, I, my guess is that, it's that the first point of contact was, was somewhere on his arms out of bounds and not his legs that landed yeah, in. It looked like his toe got it. As a high throw goes up from Vancouver, it's going to float, and that's going to be deed there. So, so Vancouver had a chance to actually get a fourth straight break to start the game, but it's a, a turnover on the first throw. Now Seattle looks to score quickly. A flick huck down the right sideline. Oh, a nice grab there by Klein. He looks towards the end zone. Now he has a dump. That's Feely. Feely puts it in the end zone, and that's going to be a score for number 23, Todd Silva. Yeah. Uh, just don't lie, Chris. Uh, I thought he was in. Uh, referees thought, thought else was, and then Vancouver threw up a pretty ill-advised tuck there. Seattle was able to get the disc right back and, and put, in, put it in the end zone, no problem. Yeah, you go back to that hook by, uh, by Vancouver. I believe that was uh, Lee Ross who put it up. Was that kind of something with the wind that, that maybe affected the throw with the, f the float, or was it just a, just a bad force you know, throw? It, it's tough to say from here. You'd like to think that he saw something downfield that he liked, but by the time, by the, time the disc got anywhere near anyone's hands, it was just uh, yeah. you know, a big dog pile. He had too many Seattle uh, players, and, and Vancouver players really in that area. It was just a big cluster there, and no it's one always, came away It's always with difficult it. to come down with a disc in, in that kind of conditions where you're you're really kind of stuck to the spot you picked 10 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. So Seattle, who's turned the disc over on all four of their offensive possessions to start this game, actually, they finally get a first score here as they weren't broken. And now Vancouver will see them for the first time offensively as this pull travels left to right on your screen. And this is where Vancouver can really open the game up. If they're able to be patient on offense and not turn the disc over carelessly, they can really put Seattle in a tough spot for the rest of the game. Yes, as that's Victor Chang with no one on him. You mentioned taking care of the disc. They actually have the most throws for possession in the league as a questionable throw goes up, but it's going to be caught there. Yeah, Victor Chang just threw a super dump. They lost 20 yards on that throw. <laughs> but they're getting it back quickly as Hunter has it on the close sideline. He's looking. He hits Chang. Chang with no mark on him. Hits Sasha Lowe on the far sideline. Now Seattle tightens up their mark. Low across the field, as a man. That's Justin Chan with the disc. He looks, pivots a few times. High release, but he has Whitney Brown. And now Brown hits Nadon on the far sideline. Nadon looking. Low Seattle looks extremely in. content here just to let Vancouver uh, swing the disc sideline to sideline. It looks like they're poaching a ton upfield, and, oh, and, and it looks like it's paying off for them. Well, that's an uncharacteristic drop there from Eric Hunter, and Seattle's going to take over here. And you, as you mentioned, Vancouver really was throwing the disc a lot, but wasn't getting a lot out of their throws distance-wise. As Seattle moving it on the far sideline, that's Klein with it. Klein with a scuba into the end zone. Oh, but it's dropped by number seven, Henry Fan. An uncharacteristic drop for, by Hunter, followed by an uncharacteristic drop by Fan. Are two players to watch for today's game, coincidentally, yeah. Bert. Yeah, yeah, the spotlight's on them, and it doesn't look like they're handling it too graciously. Oh, and, but nearly Callahan there. Vancouver with the disc. That's Nadon. Nadon a hunter. Back to Nadon. Hits an open man, Chang. Chang with a big fake there. Hits Nadon on a floaty backhand. Vancouver again taking their time with the disc as Seattle is really locking down on these downfield cuts. And now they're working the far sideline, Vancouver. Big fake there. That's Whitney Brown. Has a man, Hunter. Hunter now with a flick. It's going to be caught by Chang on the far sideline. He's in bounds. He'll throw it towards the end zone, a leap, a grab, and a score for Eric Hunter. Great offense there uh, by Vancouver. Seattle the first time down 
was it seemed as though they they were really really poaching and and clogging up any downfield lanes and forcing Vancouver to throw the disc uh, as as much as possible to score a, a strategy that I think uh, derives from Vancouver's penchant for turnovers this season mm-hmm. on on offense and on defense just just carelessly throwing the disc away and uh, it, it seemed like it paid off it was, it was an unfortunate drop there by Henry Fan but I, I do like the defensive strategy Seattle's Seattle's employing by just making Vancouver throw as many throws as possible if they're going to score. Yeah, it looked like they were doing a great job of keeping the, those throws short, as you were mentioned. That was the first time we got to see the Seattle defense. Uh, we'll see their offense out here again. We've seen them quite a few times here, Bert. What do they have to do to uh, try to limit these turnovers here against Vancouver? Uh, I just think they need to calm down, Chris. It, it seemed that they, they got a little anxious after that first hand block, a little bit uh, uncomfortable and a little rustled, and and it forced them into some some uncharacteristic mental miscommunication issues. Yeah, just a few mistakes in those early possessions. They'll look to work it here as it's on the far sideline. That's Entz with it. He puts up a flick. And that's going to be deep there as I think that's Gusson asking for a foul call and he's going to get it. Was that a foul or a strip, Bert? I couldn't tell. I believe they're calling a strip. Yeah. Those are the type of things you're never really quite sure of as a defender. You just have to... Have to hope the referees get it right. Yeah, as now Seattle working the far sideline. It was a, a strip call as a platy ha- flick goes into the end zone. Oh, but a leap there by Hauser and an excellent grab for his score. And it's coming back, though, and we're going to have a call here. Wow, I think they're, uh, they're, they're stalling him out there. Unbelievable. Which... Which is, it's unfortunate because that was an incredible play by Hauser. But it gets erased as a stall count was made. And now, a nice throw over the top there on the far sideline. Vancouver looks to get another break here. They already have three. Now a big backhand towards the end zone. It has some hang to it. A leap, a grab, and a score by Ted Chu. So one guy in the left side, in the left end. Oh, this is going back? This one's going back here too, Bert. First we get one from Seattle, and now one from Vancouver. Yeah, it doesn't look to be anything other than a travel violation, and they'll throw it right back up into the air. And that throw is going to go out of bounds. A nice effort there, but it's going to be a turnover for Vancouver. So two skies erased on back-to-back hucks there, Bert. I think the only people more uh, upset than these Vancouver fans might be our our production team here. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of confusion as Seattle now has it. In the front of their end zone, that's Gusson. He throws it in the end zone for a quick score. That's Daniel Greeley with it. A very confusing possession there, Nick, Abert, and it ends with a, with a score for Seattle. Yeah, a ton of confusion. Uh, it's an unfortunate, unfortunate for both teams not, and, and for us not to, not to have those highlights ends that point, but, but great job by Seattle there, sticking with the plan and, uh, and getting the goal. Yeah, Seattle, they were able to really execute quickly on that turnover by Vancouver. Um, that's something that, you know, you like to see from any team, really, in the MLU. A minute 51 left. Vancouver's up 4-2 on Seattle. They'll receive this pull here. What do you want to see from this Vancouver offense, uh, we, you know, to try to counter the fact that Seattle's really preventing them from going deep on their, on their cuts and on their throws? I'm a strong proponent of you take what the defense gives you. Normally, the defense has to give you something that allows you to score. There's always an easy route to scoring. Uh, it's not quite as easy for a team like Vancouver – to throw the disc that much, which is why Seattle's putting them in that position. But, but they should have a ton of chances to get easy, simple yards uh, by simply just catching and throwing five, 10 yard dink and dunk throws. They just need to have the patience and wherewithal to throw it at the right time and not, uh, mm-hmm. you know, f- get over anxious and try and force the, di- force the issue. Yeah. Kind of how we saw, what we saw from Seattle in their first couple of possessions. Really. Obviously easier said than done, yeah. Chris. So let's see if, let's see if they can get it done. And they'll take this pull. That's low with it. Low taking his time, looking for a flick. Sends one off. Nearly deed there, but caught by his man. That's Davidson. He puts up a flick hook down the field. It's going to be contested. Oh, and an excellent D there. That's number zero, Chris Rupp. It looks like Chris Rupp baited him a little bit into that one. Yeah, he, he took a nice angle to the disc there, Bert. Now Rupp has it. Loose mark on Rupp. He puts up a flick, has a man. That was Silva, who hit Fan. Now Fan with a laser beam of a huck, and that's just going to travel too far for his man to catch it in the end zone, Bert. Yeah, just just a little bit out of reach there. Uh, 
So and on, oh, and a, and a foul was called, I believe. Yep, we're gonna get a foul here, so the disc is gonna come all the way back. That probably had something to do with the throw. I was just about to say that it's very uncharacteristic of uh, of Henry Fan not to connect on those deep throws. It's, you know, one of the best parts of his game is his ability to to hit def or hit receivers downfield. So so no surprise there that there was a little bit of contact on the throw. Yep, as Fan now hits a man, Silva. Silva has Harrington, has a flick there. That's number 22, Klein. Klein hits Fan. Fan now with a backhand. Gets it around his mark. Silva with it now. Loose mark on him as low comes up on him. Silva with a fake. Now dumps it to Cam Bailey. Bailey over to Fan. Fan with a big fake on the backhand. Hits Bailey now. Back to Fan with a flick here. That was number eight, Harrington, who gets it back to Fan. Fan with a backhand in the end zone and a score there, Bert. What a throw. Henry Fan really sees all the field. It's quite a joy to watch, honestly. Uh, when, when, he's, when he's able to, to see all those throws and throw all those bendy fun throws, it really, it really makes you want to go outside and toss a few yourself. That was a great, great throw. As you see Evan Klein doing a nice dance there near the end zone. A nice catch, too. That was a really hard throw, but we don't t typically see those thread-the-needle type throws in Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah, and something impressive about that throw was uh, the speed in which it came in on, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, when you throw an outside backhand like that, it tends to level off and float and hang into the air. Uh, that one really, really came in with some pace and didn't leave the defender a ton of time to, to adjust to it and, and have a chance at a block. Yeah, an excellent throw there by Fan. That's why he's our player to watch for today's game. So Seattle has their third point of the game. They're down by one now to Vancouver. They trail 4-3 with just five seconds here in the first quarter. Does Vancouver have a realistic shot to score here, Bert? Uh, probably not, but, but we've seen crazier things happen on these end-of-quarter plays in the past. Yep, now Vancouver will take it as you see the clock winding down. And that's going to be a floaty throw, and that's going to do it here in the first quarter. It's certainly been an exciting one, Bert. Yes, uh, it's good, good for, Vanc or for, for Seattle to get that break back right there before the end of the quarter. I think that will serve them well. They're starting to get a little bit more confidence and a little bit more comfortable playing uh, in this game away from home. And, uh, and the Nighthawks, you know, you have to tip your cap to them for really putting on the pressure early. I think – I think they're going to need to uh, to keep keep up that that tempo and that and that pace in order to, to stand a chance of winning in this one. All right. So at the end of one, we got the Nighthawks up over the Rainmakers four three. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. That was an incredible game to watch. It was a huge loss. I just decided to launch and try to get it. I knew if I went up early enough, I could get it. And all of a sudden, there are feet kind of above heads. Does it all come back to this loss? Does it all come back to this play? If I had four hands, I would put all four hands on it. It was up the other line. They had to deliver. Boston kept doing this thing that he didn't think was possible. The team in is just to have as much fun as possible. It's an experience, man. You turn around and you look and there's this big giant animal running towards you. When I first started commentating, it was kind of tough for me because it's like, well, I can be out there too. I can play with these guys. Well, why am I up here in the booth? Jeff Grant is, is he's a freaking monster. Um, he can sort of just do it all, you know? A few of my students were like, we saw you on the bus. I was like, I don't ride the bus. No, you were on the side of the bus. And we are back with tonight's matchup between the Seattle Rainmakers and the Vancouver Nighthawks. At the end of one, the score is 4-3 here in favor of Vancouver. Bert, they were able to get a lot of breaks in that first quarter, three breaks, and uh, that was a big part in why they're in the lead here. Absolutely. Vancouver's defense did a phenomenal job there. Uh, you know, definitely they got some help from S Seattle's offense with a little bit of of carelessness with the disc, but Vancouver did, did their job after the turn, was able to punch it in. Like we said, Chris, we expected there to be a lot of touches for both teams. That's, that's the way both offenses typically like to operate. 
and mm-hmm. T-Pops are high. Seattle at 6.8, Vancouver at 6.2 after the, after the first quarter here. Yeah, and that's typical of both these teams. They're 1-2 and two in the MLU this season in T-Pop. Um, we saw some early turnovers there from Seattle, just really uncharacteristic of them. Uh, do you, what are they going to do here to clean that up in the second quarter? Seattle just needs to to stay calm. I think I think they're throwing the disc away just due to communication issues, among other things. There was a couple throws that are just sort of gotten away from them. They're getting a little lazy, uh, which is something we typically don't see from this team. Their 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 t their true scoring efficiency coming or total scoring efficiency coming into the to this game is a fifty one percent, and they and they sit right now at thirty three percent, which is just you know extremely uncharacteristic mm-hmm. of them. Yeah, and you look at the score, 4-3, just seven points in that quarter. That's kind of low scoring, Bert. Is that a result of the fact that both these teams have so many throws per possession? I think it is, Chris. I yeah. think both these teams are just just tossing the disc around, and, and that's really just the way that both of them prefer to operate. They prefer to operate uh, with, with their handler movement and having options downfield as opposed to getting the disc to their handlers downfield and giving those, those now – quote-unquote handlers because they have the disc, a lot of space upfield for deep shots. Yep, as we see Vancouver pulling right to left on your screen. Both teams really doing a great job at limiting deep shots down the field, as you mentioned so far early on in this game. Seattle takes over here. That's Greeley with the disc. Hits a man on the sideline. That's 23 Silva with it now. Seattle working the far sideline. Silva hits Greeley. Greeley with the fake. He has a dump. That's Gussin. Gussin has a man now. That's Hauser with a nice grab. I believe we're going to get a call here. Is that an injury? Yeah, it looks like the defender just got, got his uh, spikes on the back of his foot there. It's never a good feeling. No. I'm sure he'll be back, back out in no time, though. As that's number two, Peter Ostergaard runs onto the field to take over for Hauser. Hauser's definitely been a big influence on the Seattle offense this season, Bert. Absolutely. Peter Ostergaard as well, two players that have really, really grown into offensive roles this year uh, due to the void left by Mark Burton. Both of those players have have really increased their offensive production. Yes, Hauser and Ostergaard have been great, especially down the field for this Seattle team. As we see Seattle work in it, that's Chris Rupp with the disc with a flick to the close sideline. He has a man. That's Ostergaard. Ostergaard now puts up a high flick. That's Rupp. Rupp. Nice flick on the sideline, but I think they're going to say he traveled as this disc is coming back. Took a couple steps before that throw, Bert. Yeah, yeah, just took a, a couple too many there. Uh, Seattle's finding a ton of space on this four sideline, but I'd like to see them get off the sideline, give themselves a little bit more to operate with. As Rupp hits a man, that's number 32 with the disc. He puts it on the close sideline. That's Gussin with it. Gussin. Flick towards the end zone. Does it have enough? It does, and it's going to be a score for Robin Breen. Great throw there. I don't know that it was on purpose, but that's exactly what you want to do when you're being forced on your own sideline is put something in blady like that that has a lot of a lot of speed on it and doesn't give your defender any time to, to do anything about it. So, so good job there. It looks like the wind sort of took that one for mm-hmm. him. But, uh, but we'll give him benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah, but as you were mentioning, it looked like Seattle was doing a very, very good job of working that sideline. Is that, is that a hole in the defense that they're, they're going to look to uh, exploit here against Vancouver? Uh, I don't think so, Chris. I think, I think that Seattle preferably would like to get the disc a little more central than they were. It's, it's tough to operate on a sideline like that. I think they did a great job of winning their matchups, and that, that made it less of an issue. But typically you don't. You don't like to be stuck with, with such little field to operate with on the four side. I think Vancouver just needs to do a little bit better of a job of, of making those easy and obvious cuts mm-hmm. l- more difficult. As we see a timeout here, this is going to set up for a half field pull. Seattle's going to send it right to left. Are they just using this to try to get a break and get a, their first lead here, Bert? I think they are. I think Seattle Seattle's trying to treat this like a big brother, little brother situation. They're, they're a little bit tired of this pesky Nighthawks team, and, mm-hmm. and they're hoping to to get a lead and, and run away with this as the game goes on. Yeah, Vancouver got off to that 3-0 lead, but Seattle's currently on a 4-1 run as Vancouver takes over in their own end zone. They're working quickly with it, and they get it out of the end zone. That's Barbieri with the disc. Barbieri looking for a man. He's guarded tightly. He gets off a throw. Oh, a nice layout effort there by Seattle, but I think they're going to say it's a foul here. 
as it's Whitney Brown with it. Yeah, it looks like the defender knew that that was a little bit too aggressive uh, on that layout attempt. As Hunter puts up a throw, but that's going to be hand-blocked. And another block at the end there. Great defensive effort there by Seattle, Bert. Yeah, it's exactly what Seattle is looking for from the, uh, the half-field pull. Let's see if they can make him pay. As Vancouver double teams here on the mark, a high floaty throw. But Seattle's going to come down with it. That was Cam Bailey. He gets it to his man. Feely puts it towards the end zone. It's going to float. A leap, a grab, and a score. Number eight, Dylan Harrington. And Seattle takes their first lead of the game here, Bert. Great job by Seattle there to stay patient. I thought Vancouver did a great job of putting on some double teams to try and force a, a quick turn from Seattle, who typically, when they get turnovers, like to, like to work with a fast-break offense. Vancouver did a good job of slowing it down, but unfortunately uh, let someone run free deep, and, and they paid the price. Yeah, that was an easy score there for uh, number eight, D Dylan Harrington. Uh, as we're seeing uh, Seattle on this 4-1 run over Vancouver, what, what are the things that Vancouver has to do to try to, try to get back into this one? Uh, and try to stay with the Seattle team. Yeah, well, Seattle, like we said before, was going was gonna to force Vancouver to, to throw the disc and sort of trust that, that their, their type of play this season isn't, hasn't been a fluke and that they're, gonna, they're going to give Seattle the disc if they, if they play a patient enough conservative defense. So I think Vancouver just, just needs to break out of their mold a little bit and, and start taking care of the disc a little bit better than they have so far this game. Yeah, as a... Uh... Vancouver will work it now. That's number seven, Victor Chang. Chang, looking, has a dump, low, to the far sideline, back to low. Low, puts up a laser beam of a backhand, <laughs> but to three defenders, and it's going to be Deed. Seattle takes over. A nice layout there by Cam Bailey to keep it alive, Bert. Yeah, you could tell Sasha Lowe did not get uh, what he wanted out of that throw. It was way too low to the ground. Uh, too much traffic upfield for it to stand a chance of getting to his receiver. As now Seattle will take over after the low turnover. That's Fan with it. Backhand. It's a man. That's Bailey. Bailey with the flick. Has a man on an in cut. That was Beaner. Beaner up the field. Now Fan with it again. Back to Feely. Feely with no mark on him, really. He hits a man who gives it right back to him. Feely with the loose mark, floats it up to a man, that's Bailey. Back to Feely, down to the far sideline, that's Rupp. Rupp hits him in, oh no, but it's going to be dropped there by number 15, Ben Beaner, and Vancouver takes back over. It's really a shame they weren't able to, to get a break there. That was some beautiful offense on the turn before that drop. And now Vancouver will take over on the turn, that's Nadon with the disc, he'll hit Lowe. Lowe, who had that turnover earlier in this possession, for Vancouver, puts up a backhand, and that's going to be another turnover here for Lowe, Bert. It looks like Sasha Lowe's getting a little bit too creative and a little too confident with his throws right now. Just a couple things getting away from him. He's trying to, to fit throws into precise windows instead of seeing the space and, and throwing simpler throws. Yeah, Seattle will take over again on the low turnover. That was just two forced backhands by Lowe, and now a backhand into the end zone. Oh, nearly caught there by number 29, Eddie Feely, are they gonna, it looked like it might have been a strip, but I think they're going to say it was a clean D in the end zone. Yeah, I think that was, that was Nadon who was able to get a hand on that. Uh, just hanging a little bit too high in the air. These are, these are all athletic players who can, create, who can cover a lot of space quickly, so, so you never want to have the disc hanging for too long. Yeah, as Vancouver takes over again here, low with the disc. Let's see if he could make a good throw here. He does. Hits a man on the far sideline. Back across. A backhand. It looked like it got deflected, but two Vancouver players in the area as Hunter comes down with the disc. Hunter with a flick to the far sideline. That's low, and I think we're going to get a call here. Let's see what this is, Bert. It looks like a timeout call. Um, I'm not sure yet if that's Vancouver or Seattle who's taking that timeout, but clearly it's been a long point. Both these teams are pretty gassed. Uh, I, I'm assuming that, that if it's Vancouver's timeout, they're probably going to keep the offense out here, just want to get a breather, mm -hmm. calm their nerves a little bit uh, so they can, they can come back and punch this in. Yeah, that was certainly a long point. It started at about the 840 mark, and uh, it's 501 left in the, in the second quarter. Seattle's up 5-4 over Vancouver. It's been a tight one here, but we'd like to take this time to remind you that MLU is brought to you by Innova. Innova is proud to support Major League Ultimate and its incredible athletes. As the official disc of the MLU, the Innova Pulsar has quickly become the disc of choice at Ultimate's highest level. Visit InnovaDisc.com to find a dealer near you. 
For this timeout, obviously, uh, you know, a long point. These teams are trying to collect themselves. What's going on in these huddles for both these teams on offense and defense? Yeah, so, so Vancouver looks like like they're they're going to be tossing out a different line here if, if their huddle is any indication. It looks like they're going to be throwing out some of their D-line players. Nicholas Lim, I can see. Michael Loras, I can see for sure, uh, which surprises me a little bit. I think Vancouver, typically, they, they have a seven-person O-line they like to stick with, so they must be extremely tired right now, and they just, they just really need a breather. Or the coach just doesn't like what he's seeing schematically and, and, wants, to, and wants to make a change. Um, Seattle will probably do more of the same. I think, I think they like their scheme for this game. They like the, the tactics that they're using, and they think they're going to pay off. And so far at this point, they have. They've gotten the turns. They just haven't been able to punch it in themselves. Mm -hmm. If you keep giving Seattle chances to punch it in if, as Vancouver tries to get the hold, they're going to lose and they're going to get a break. And if you look at the score here, it's 5-4 in favor of Seattle. But those four Vancouver points, three of them came off of D points. So we've really seen their offense struggle here, Bert. Yeah, their offense has not done a great job thus far of of being patient and taking what what Seattle's giving them. They're they're trying to force the disc a little bit too much and also doing things that we've seen all season, just uh youth turnovers is what I'll call them. Mm -hmm. Inexperienced players trying to trying to to make throws that are harder than what's necessary. Sasha Lowe trying trying to take a deep shot downfield and just not executing on a on a backhand. Again, trying to, to be fancy and really blade something in on the far sideline instead of just putting something flat and out to space that, is just, that his receiver can catch when, when he wants to. Yeah. So we're going to see a new line here for Vancouver. Maybe they'll be a little more patient with the disc here as Lee Ross gets it to his man on the far sideline. Back over to Lee Ross. Now he'll swing it to the close sideline. A flick goes up into the end zone, and that's going to be D. That would look like a poor choice there, Bert. Yeah, Seattle is baiting Vancouver into a ton of throws right now. But that's going to be a turnover on a drop, and Vancouver is going to take back over. That was Ma Magalon with a defensive effort there. And now a throw into the end zone, or it's going to be just short. Vancouver working it here. It's Magalon yeah. with the disc. Yep, Magalon with a nice throw. He breaks his mark just short of the end zone, and that is going to be a score for number 26, Joshua Lamb. But that was a great break mark, uh, break mark there. From the earlier throw, Bert. Yeah, Magalon with a very, very fast and impressive inside break on that forehand. One of the toughest throws to stop near the end zone because you have to be so conscious of not getting beat to the four side. Uh, and with the shortened field, the disc doesn't have to travel very far, and, and Magalon definitely made them pay with that throw there. Yeah, really fit it in uh, with a lot of precision, and that'll draw this game uh, to a tie. 5-5, five, five, 420 remaining in the quarter. Uh, we'll see Vancouver's defense out here again. Uh, let's see if they could get a stop and take back, take another lead here over the Seattle team. So I don't know if Seattle expected to get this, uh, this kind of an effort from this Vancouver team so far, Bert. Yeah, I think Vancouver's given them all they can handle. Uh, terrific throw as again from Magalon. Getting something with that much pace and rotation on it in the, in the conditions and the rain that they're playing in uh, is, is not easy. So, so it's uh, definitely a very impressive throw and something that I'm not sure Seattle thought they were capable of, of throwing. Yeah, Seattle takes over here. Hauser with the disc. Hazard with a dump, he hits a man. That's 14, really, really, up to Gussin. Back to his man, Rupp. Rupp on the far sideline, gets off a flick. He hits Silva. Silva now, over to Gussin on the far sideline. Gussin now. He's double teamed, but nobody double teamed his flick. No one was defending his flick as he gets it off to Hauser. Hauser looking now. with A low backhand, but a nice grab there. That was Greerly as Greerly puts it to the middle. That's Silva with it. Silva. Oh, it looks like the disc just slipped out of his hand, and Vancouver's going to take over here, Bert. And that's the kind of turnover the rain forces. You know, he wanted to holster it and just, and just slipped out of his hand in the last second there. Yeah, an unfortunate turnover for Seattle, but let's see if Vancouver can take advantage of it. As that's number 32, Michael E. with it. He hits a man on the close sideline. That's Ted Chu. Chu guarded. He's looking upfield. High stall count as Chu sends it into the end zone. It's going to be deed there. A nice defensive effort by Chris Rupp. And it looked like just a high stall count, and Chu had to force one into the end zone, Bert. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation there. It, he wasn't getting any activation from his cutters downfield or his reset thrower. There's just a lot of useless space being, being taken up there by Vancouver and, and forced him into just having to throw something floating into the end zone and hope for the best. As we see Seattle on a fast break here, they tried to double-team the mark in the end zone that – but uh, Rupp was able to break it. 
Now Seattle's really running away with a disc downfield as Gusson hits a man on the far sideline. That's Hauser. Hauser now puts a flick up into the end zone. A leap, a grab, and a score. That's number 32 for the score there, Bert. And I'm trying to find his name. He's not on my roster. That's Daniel Walton for the score. Yeah, great job there by, uh, by Seattle to, to get a lot, a lot of uh, throws off and, and on that fast break offense. Typically, when you get double teamed, there is one person open, and they were able to continue uh, that, that advantage for what, looked, what seemed like 40 yards upfield before Vancouver was able to, to react and finally get their defensive assignments right. Yeah, nice fast break there. As I believe, I think we're getting a timeout here, Bert. Vancouver probably wants to get a timeout to, uh, to collect themselves, it, it, or Seattle wants a timeout to, to put the, put the, the half-field pull on and, and try and get some separation here. And it looks like that's what's going to happen. It looks oh, like yep. Seattle's going get, to get their chance at another break from, uh, from a half-field pull. So Seattle takes, their lead, takes back their lead. They're up 6-5 with 2.34 remaining in this quarter. It's been a very, very defensive game so far here, Bert. Yeah, I think the rain is, is affecting these players more than they'd like to admit. Uh, a lot of turns just happening because of, it, uh, because of a wet disc. Some, some easy drops as well as some, some ill-advised execution errors on throws. Yep, as Seattle, they'll look to get a, a turn here in or close to Vancouver's end zone with a short field pull as Lowe handles it for Vancouver. Vancouver gets it out of their own end zone. That's Nate on. A very poachy defense for Seattle, it looks like. Yeah, I'm not sure what Seattle was trying to do there, but they didn't do a great job of closing down on the disc after getting that half-field pull down, and uh, it really cost them. Yeah, as Whitney Brown, who is wide open, hits a man. Now, Chu with it. Excuse me, Victor Chang with it. That's Nate on. Vancouver taking their time with it. Nate on to the sideline. That's Whitney Brown. Back to Nate on on an upline. Nate on now takes his time. He has a flick to the close sideline. That's a man. A big fake there. Now back over to Whitney Brown. Brown with a backhand. He has a man. That's Justin Chan with it. Chan back over to Brown. Vancouver making a lot of throws here, Bert. Yeah, being very patient with the disc, which is exactly what they need to be. As, as we see a break scuba yeah. right on the money, though, to Justin, Victor Chang. And now Chang looks like he kind of stepped back with that flick, and that's going to be a turnover. Yeah, just a poor decision there by Victor Chang. Looks like a completely contested throw. As uh, Seattle will take over on the Chang turnover. We've seen some ill-advised throws here in these last couple of points from this Vancouver offense. As Seattle working in a fast break. That's Bailey, puts up a flick towards the end zone, has a man, a leap, a grab, and a score for number 22, Evan Klein. Yeah, easy offense on the turn there by Seattle, and again, the half-field pull works, although, although the execution on the actual half-field pull was poor again, and Vancouver was able to move the disc up field, uh, the Seattle defense proved that if you make this Vancouver team throw as many throws as they're making them, turnovers will come, and they will have their break chances. So far, so good. Yep, Seattle takes their first two-point lead of this game uh, with a minute 10 left. Seattle's up 7-5 over Vancouver. Is this a point where Seattle could start to run away with this game, Bert? It is if Vancouver lets them. They really need to, to get a grip and get one of these holds coming up, or, or the game might get a little bit out of hand for them. Yeah, Seattle's outscored them 7-2 to in the last nine points. Uh, their defense is really performing well. Vancouver's struggling to uh, to hold on to the disc. Uh, is it really just poor decision making from their throwers, Bert? I think it's a little bit of both, but th but the poor decision making uh, it needs to stop if they if they want to win this game. And and I sound a bit like a broken record. I I think I've been saying that for for them throughout the season. Uh, but it, the fact still remains when this team is being smart with the disc and just taking the patient dump swing looks, you can see they're moving up the field. It's just unlocking that final third and finding that, that person in the end zone that's been difficult, and they try and force the situation just a little bit too more too often. Yeah, we see that a lot, not just with this team, but with a lot of young teams at the college level a lot of times. As we see a layout and a grab, number seven, Henry Fan, our player to watch with the Callahan. Yeah, I was just about to mention how Seattle used their third and final timeout to get another half field pull, and that one they executed perfectly. It looks like they lulled them to sleep at their last two half field pulls before Henry Fan just sprinted down the field <laughs> and got a Callahan. That and, was an impressive play there. And we see the whole team hit the Bernie there in the end zone, Bert. An excellent layout grab by Fan, and that is a big momentum swing as Seattle scores with just four seconds taken off the clock, and they will receive this pull with the new Callahan rule. 
Yeah, Vancouver's O-line cannot be feeling good right now. They've not gotten a lot of chances to score when they have had their chances. They've squandered them, and now the D-line is out there again after after Vancouver's inability to even get out of the end zone and, and you know pretty much give Seattle a point there. And you mentioned before this game even started, Bert, this is an example, that this Vancouver team who sh that has shown a lot of promise this season as they've grown, but they have, uh, you know, they are, when they are hot, they're hot. They got off to that 3-0 lead we're all on breaks, but when they're cold, they just cannot, they just seem to not be able to put it together. Yeah, they, they can't seem to get anything done right now. Let's see if, uh, if they, can, they can use some of that youth and that energy to get back into this game. So Seattle with a big opportunity here to cash in on a Callahan. That's number 14. Daniel Greeley with the disc. And they're keeping Henry Fan out there on the O-line now after that Callahan. They know that he's one of their better players, even though he plays strictly uh, D-line for them. They want him out on the field in this uh, end-of-the-half situation. He certainly has a lot of energy out there, Bert, as Seattle works the disc. That's Breen with it. Breen hits Greeley on a swing. Greeley looking. Flick to the middle of the field. Has a man. That's Fan with it. Fan puts up a flick. Has Silva. Silva now, he hits a man, that's Breen with it, Breen with a flick towards the end zone, and that is going to be a score for Hauser, and Seattle takes a 9-5 lead over Vancouver with 26 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, Seattle finding a familiar face in the end zone, Hauser has been huge for this team this year, coming into this game he had 17 goals, top 5 in the league, uh, and, and he's picking up right where he left off this game, I believe he has 2 goals now? Yeah, it was his second goal. Yeah, and so he's, he's showing no signs of, of slowing down, and this Vancouver team is in desperate need of a hold here. Yeah, as uh, Seattle scores their ninth point, they're now on a 9-2 run after Vancouver got off to that 3-0 lead. 26 seconds remaining here in the half. Uh, what is Vancouver going to try to do here? They're, uh, they don't really put the disc deep, Bert, but what are they going to try to do to score here with these 26 seconds? Uh, you, you know, your guess is as good as mine, Chris. Everything they've, they've seemingly tried to do has been ineffective over the last quarter and a half. Um, they still have two of their timeouts. They just haven't had a chance to use them uh, really effectively at all because they've been just, they've been just getting scored on so often here. So, so they need to figure out a way to get the disc into the end zone now yeah, before this as, gets out of hand. As we see him working with it. They've got some good position with it early on in this possession. 20 seconds left. The last thing they should do is, is feel, uh, feel the need to, to toss something ill-advised, which is what they've been doing uh, so far this quarter. And as, that's what they'll do. As Hunter puts up a big bladey flick into the end zone, it's going to be deed, as you mentioned, Bert. Kind of a forced throw there, and the clock's going to run out on the half as it ticks down 2-1. And that's going to be it for the first half here. As we see, oh, is it? Seattle wants, a, wants something here. Are they, are they arguing for possession, Bert? Uh, I think they just needed to, to get the, the disc back in play in order for the clock to officially run out there. Uh, yeah, and that's going to do it, actually. So final score at the end of one half. Seattle's up over Vancouver, 9-5. We saw a Callahan there by Fan at the end of the half. That was a big momentum shift, Bert. Yeah, it's, you know, it's been a great game so far. Just when Vancouver got you to start believing, Seattle really turned it up a gear, found their comfort level, and you know, went on a huge run. All right, so that's going to just about do it here for the first half. Seattle's up 9-5 to five over Vancouver. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back. Hayes collects that one. He's got Person going deep this time. He's looking to connect with him, and he does. And Much that's more the 100. Throw. Right there, there it is. 100 goals, Timmy Person. Put it up on the board. The first person to get to he 100, knows it. <laughs> first person to get to 100 goals, 100 assists, it's him on the goal side. That's perfect. That, and that's the sort of play that you're used to seeing from Person, is where he's just running away from defenders. And once he gets that lead on you, there's no chance you're catching up to him. fast break here a little bit after that turnover, but then there's a miscommunication in the backfield. <laughs> Del Rico Johnson is playing oh the tips. Goodness. And that is one of the most exciting defenses we've seen in some time. 
and it's capped off with a Lloyd Blake lefty backhand to Eric Salmi for the goal. And Rico's gonna keep the tip party going. Kitra Schnell drops it back for Inselman. We'll see if he puts it up. It's a low line drive throw. It's caught by Katz. Katz, did he get it off? He did. They score this time at the last second with Carter Thalman. And here, he does a great job of getting that pass off quickly. Does a great job of staying in the end zone. That's the way Boston wanted to end that. trying to dump it back to Trevor Smith and it had to float over Braz and now they look for the end zone. Ben Katz all alone and he's got it. The deepest player whose defender you can see there, Ted Jansen was not ready. Cloud with it, cloud, whoa. Wow, <laughs> great D there by Todd Sleva. The Nate on. That's Davidson. Sorry, and Davidson makes a wonderful grab, towing the line in the back of the end zone. Luckett working up that far sideline. Here comes the hook for Sheridan. He's got Davidson here. And Sheridan with an incredible catch. Come on here this season for Boston. Case guys over Stevens to get it back. Now looks for the end zone. They chase it down. They do. Gets it inside out shot. Tough window to find Cam Bailey. They were trying to dump it back to Trevor Smith and it had to float over Braz and now they look for the end zone. Ben Katz all alone and he's got it. back for Inselman. We'll see if he puts it up. A low line drive throw. It's caught by Katz. Katz did he get it off. He did. They score this time at the last second with Carter Dallin. Here he does a great job of getting that pass off quickly. Great job of staying in the end zone. That's the way Boston wanted to end that. Ace collects that one. He's got person going deep this time. He's looking to connect with him. And he does. And Much that's the hundred. The right there it there. is. 100 goals, Timmy Purston. Put it up on the board. The first person to get to he 100. Knows it. The first person to get to 100 goals and an assist, it's him on the goal side. To Barber. Barber pops it over the top. He's got Jasper Lewis all over the back of the end zone, and that's the game. What a final point for the Nighthawks, and that'll be their first win of the season. Backfield. Del Rico Johnson is playing the tips, and that is one of the most exciting defenses we've seen in some time. And it's capped off with a Lloyd Blake lefty backhand to Eric Salme for the goal. And Rico's gonna keep this tip party going. Neely has the most assists on the Rainmakers D team, so throwing breaks. This is a high flick that goes up anybody's ball. Evan Klein comes down with it, had the read on it. See a little float on those. Edelman. <laughs> and get it off right away with one of those high floaty flicks. That one really beautifully put out to space for Robin Breen to run onto. Cam Bailey, nice high flick. Throw goes cross field into the turf. Tridiak picks it up immediately, sends one up to McKibben. McKibben 
trying to get there over Nate Young. Nate Young says no, gets the D. Nice D by Young. Clay Dewey Valentine initiating this time for the Rainmakers. Finds McKibben, swings it out over to Gussin. Gussin winds up and sends one to Khalif El Salam. El Salam. Ooh. Young swings it over to Shanka. Shanka sends one too high, and Klein comes down with it. You know, those shadow blocks can be really effective. Even if you don't hit the disc, you might distract the player. Oh, here's a hospital pass. Luke Jesperson get, gets a read on it and gets there. Evan Klein sends one a little too high, and then Jesperson puts <laughs> one a little too low, but Cam Bailey knows what to do with that. Good pressure there from the Rainmakers. Cross field attempt. No great defensive pressure stopping Klein. Klein gets it, winds up, throws it downfield, blocked there by the long arms of Ben Hubbard. Nice D by Hubbard. Dewey Valentine having to send a blady one into Tridiac, who sends a lofty one across field. Oh, wow, great bid there by Devin Williams, but Klein, Evan Klein, hanging on. Gets it. Inside out shot. Tough window to find. Cam Bailey pulls it through the window, does a little dance. Another deep shot here by the Dogfish. And this layout grab is good. <laughs> Fan and Rupp. Fan with a break shot. Out in front to Neely. Neely, nice grab. Cloud with it. Cloud. Put, whoa. Wow. <laughs> Great D there by Todd Sleva. Finds Janinas back. Janinas puts it out to space to Shaw. Shaw, tons of room to run onto it. A nice shot. From Janinis to Tridiac, who launches a hammer to an open Hauser. Hammer to Hauser. Hammer to Hauser. And Khalif El Salam right to Fan and back to Salam, who bobbles it. But Beaner, <laughs> it's a bobble to Ben Beaner. <laughs> Colby Chuck. Chuck sends one. And Chuck's Chuck finds David Janinis in the end zone. Horace, the unintentional. Just looks like Kevin Chu might have zigged when Hoy was expecting a zag. Those are the types of young, inexperienced things. Oh, wow. There you have another un young, inexperienced play from Shaw. And you can see gathered in. I believe that's Fisk. Janitas, nice, ca nice catch by, by Devin Williams. And then the deep shot for Davidson. And he is excited to get that one, Bert. Dogfish working up that far sideline. Here comes the huck for Sheridan. He's got Davidson near him. And Sheridan with an incredible catch in the end zone. Who's going? Oh, oh. That wow. is a funky little throw there. Finds Shaw, who puts up a hammer for Sonky. And Sonky brings it in. An underrated part of that catch is that he knows he's got to keep his body in bounds. As Sheridan puts the hammer up for Williams. And that's a quick break for San Francisco to open the second quarter. Yeah, the marks are a little tight. And there's Barber. He's going to shoot one deep. He has a guy back in the end zone. And it's brought in. We've got Vancouver here with Victor Chang. Oh, that's a nice layout D from San Francisco. Who finds Hunter, who's sporting that band ear into the last point of the first half. Puts it up. And there's Davidson going up over Sheridan. And Davidson basically from his knees to Nadon for the score. Jaeger channeling his inner Sheridan there, just trying to bobble it as many times as possible. And that is an ill-advised put that's deed up by Vancouver. Goldstein was the intended target. And Sonky with that beautiful around backhand and a layout goal for James Yeager. Fisk finds Sheridan. Sheridan's going to shoot it deep. That one's going to hang a little bit. He's looking for Williams, and that's deed up by Hunter. Nade on. Oh, Chang with the grab. Chang's going to send it deep to Nade on. No, that's Davidson, sorry, and Davidson makes a wonderful grab, towing the line in the back of the end zone. <laughs> that's a wonderful little dance to follow it up. The pass and an inside flick going deep, and it's taken back by Shaw. This point's getting out of hand. And, ooh, he thought he had LaRosse, as it is that he still had the timeout remaining with under two minutes to go, and Justin Chan gives that one away with the clock winding down. 12 seconds. They're in shooting distance. Jaeger's going to put it up. He's got Sonky. That's the matchup you want. And Sonky cannot come down with it with four seconds remaining. Williams a chance to be forgiven for everything with an assist here. And he does not convert. Up to Jaeger. 
jaeger has got Goldstein, and Goldstein brings it in with a minute and eight seconds left, spikes the disc down. We are tied once again. Hunter's going to send it deep. This could be big if they could bring it in. Justin Chan chasing it down. And, oh, a last-second defensive effort there. 15 yards outside the end zone with Lynn. Lynn to Barber, and Barber pops one over the top. He's got Jasper Lou all alone in the back of the end zone, and that's the game. What a final point for the Nighthawks, and that'll be their first win of the season. That was an incredible game to watch. It was a huge loss. I just decided to launch and try to get it. I knew if I went up early enough, I could get it. And all of a sudden, there are feet kind of above heads. Does it all come back to this loss? Does it all come back to this play? If I had four hands, I would put all four hands on the It was up the other line. They had to deliver. Boston kept doing this thing that you didn't think was possible. The team in is just to have as much fun as possible. It's an experience, man. You turn around and you look and there's this big giant animal running towards you. When I first started commentating, it was kind of tough for me because it's like, well, I can be out there too. I can play with these guys. Well, why am I up here in the booth? Jeff Grant is, is he's a freaking monster. Uh, he can sort of just do it all, you know? A few of my students were like, we saw you on the bus. I was like, I don't ride the bus. No, you were on the side of the bus. Welcome back to the action. It's halftime here. I'm Chris Markowitz alongside Bert Katzen, bringing you coverage of tonight's matchup between the Seattle Rainmakers and, Makers and the Vancouver Nighthawks. I'd like to take this time to uh, remind you that MLU Live is brought to you by Canterbury. Canterbury, the official apparel supplier to Major League Ultimate. Dress like a pro. Visit www.canterbury.com. CanterburyUS.com, the destination for all your team's custom uniforms and athletic apparel needs. Canterbury. Proud to partner Major League Ultimate, committed to the game. And Skippy, Skippy, the official peanut butter of the Vancouver Nighthawks, made with the funnest peanuts ever. Skippy Yippy. Always love reading that, uh, that ad there, Bert. As we're here at halftime, you want to take a look back at our players to watch for the game? Yeah, I always enjoy hearing, uh, hearing different announcers do the, the Skippy Yippy. I think you got a great one. Oh, thanks, Bert. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking back at the players of the game, Henry Fan, obviously, you know, someone we said was going to be, you know, a difference maker in this, in this one, and so far that has been the case. One goal, one assist, one block through the half, but obviously – the big play coming in was that Callahan at the end of the quarter, which really had more of an impact on this scoreline and this game uh, going forward than, than really anything else that he could have done. The momentum shift of it alone, but also the fact that it allowed them an extra offensive possession. It was essentially a two-goal swing there, and, and here they are up 9-5 to five and off of a quarter where they just outscored Vancouver 6-1. to one. Yeah, Fan really seemed like he was struggling a little bit up to that point. I believe he had a, a drop or two leading into that uh, Callahan, Bert. But as you mentioned, that was a big momentum swing for Vancouver, and they, it really allowed them to get two points quick on this Vancouver team. Let's take a look at Vancouver's player to watch, Eric Hunter. Yeah, and, and, and talk about you know a tale of, of two key players here, Chris. Eric Hunter not having a good game so far. Pretty sure he's, he's tops on the team right now in turnovers, uh, which which isn't great for a team that's turning the disc over way too much mm -hmm. as it is. He's he's typically a player for them who's who's been very reliable and someone someone not turning the disc over, full of a young roster of a ton of players turning the disc over. And in this one, he's he's definitely helping to compa compound their their turnover issue. Yeah, he has uh, three turnovers here tonight, two off of throws, one off of a drop. Uh, let's look at these two teams, though, Bert. It was a great start early on for Vancouver, and they just seemed to fade away in the second quarter as they were outscored, I believe, 6-1 to one by the Rainmakers. What, do, what have we seen by Vancouver as they've kind of fallen off here? Yeah, so it's, it's unfortunately been the story of Vancouver's season. 
They'll have great quarters, and they'll show you all of the potential that they have, but they just cannot seemingly figure out a way to put four good quarters together in one game, and this second quarter was a bit of a nightmare for them. As I said, they were outscored 6-1 to one in the quarter, gave up three breaks, and got zero breaks themselves. The, the biggest issue for Vancouver moving forward is, is their offense. They only have two holds on the entire game, which is just way, way too low at half. To, to say that their offense has only converted uh, when they're expected to two times out of a possible, um, I, don't know, I, mean, I don't know how many points, but you know, their offensive scoring efficiency is at 25%. Mm-hmm. One-fourth of the time, they're scoring on offense. It's, it's incredibly low, and they need to figure out uh, some adjustments to, to make up for that in the second half here. Yeah, they're going to have to figure it out quickly as they're going to start this half with the disc on offense. A short pull here from Seattle as Whitney Brown handles it now for Vancouver. High release backhand, has a wide open man, Hunter. He's our player to watch. Let's see if he, had a, he struggled in the first half. Let's see if he could pick it up here as Nadon takes his throw. And right away, you can see Seattle employing the same defensive tactics they were in the first. Uh, Seemingly okay with letting the Nighthawks move the disc side to side and give them little short in-cuts because things like this are happening at an extremely high rate. As we see, another unforced turnover here for Vancouver. Seattle is going to take over very close to their own end zone. A throw towards the end zone, and it somehow gets through two Vancouver's defenders, and it's going to be an easy score for Seattle. Yeah, more of the same from Seattle's defense and unfortunately more of the same from Vancouver's offense. Just hitting off of Victor Chang's hands there. Seattle's not doing anything special here. They're just playing a conservative defense that allows Vancouver to to move the disc five, ten yards up at a time and, you know, a little bit of light pressure on the dump resets, but nothing nothing overbearing. Just seemingly content with letting letting Vancouver move the disc side to side so long as they're not giving up big chunks of yardage. And you know they just know that if they do that, Vancouver's going to turn the disc over on their own. And, and so far, that is exactly what's happened. And I know we mentioned this at the beginning of the game. There was a little, uh, in, a, in the forecast for the weather, we had some per- precipitation. We've seen a lot of drops from both sides, but really from uh, Vancouver here. Is that, does the rain have something to do with it here, Bert? I don't think it has much to do with it as, as I'd like to say, just because this Vancouver team has had an issue with drops all season long, and the conditions are something that both teams have to play in. It's not just Vancouver who's playing in these conditions. Seattle obviously has their drops as well, but not nearly at the rate that, that uh, Vancouver does. As a forced throw there, it goes for a turnover for, for Mogollon. Seattle yep. takes over yet again, looking to capitalize on their second break of the half. They'll work it. Rupp with the disc. And that was a forced throw by Mogollon. So, you know, we've seen drops. We've seen forced throws. Vancouver's really coming apart. But an excellent D there. And I think we're going to get a call. Maybe a strip. I hope not. That was a great defense, defensive play by Ryan Hoy there. Maybe, maybe a little bit of contact on the mark, but definitely looked like a clean defensive play from Ryan Hoy. Uh, looks like the – so the – I can't tell what the call was. Looks like it's going back to the throw, or maybe a foul on the throw. It could have been that, or it also could have been uh, you know, something upfield as well. As we see, Rupp puts up a high flick, a lot of float to it. Might just go out of bounds, and it does. That was a poor throw there for Rupp, and Vancouver's going to take back over. Let's see if Vancouver can punch in punch it in here their offensive their traditional offensive line is yet to get it done so it looks like they've made the switch put some new guys out there so hopefully some fresh blood can can change their their fortunes here offensively yeah their offensive line hasn't scored since somewhere around the five minute mark in the second quarter as they nearly get another Callahan Seattle but Vancouver's handling it that's Lee Ross with a high stall count he gets it off now Vancouver working the far sideline a high throw but Hoy corrals it, now puts up a flick downfield. A leap and a sky there. Number 98, Cam Bailey with the D. And Seattle's going the other way. Seattle has been baiting them into these deep throws, and Vancouver's just not putting enough air under them to make a difference. A nice defensive effort there, though, by number 31, Jasper Liu. His leap kind of just threw off the timing of Dylan Harrington. And I, are we going to get a call here? I think Harrington wants a foul, Bert. Harrington looks like he wants a foul, and Jasper Liu looks like he needs an injury. He's, he's not, looking, uh, not looking too good, and it's looking like he's going to come off the field. Maybe he got hit in the, in the face as he, uh, both he and Harrington leaped for that disc. 
Uh, Harrington asking for a foul. He's not going to get it. So Vancouver is going to take over in their own end zone with 7.05 remaining in the quarter. And Graham Barber's on the field, which is a great sight to see, considering he's one of their more patient handlers that they have. Hopefully he can help turn the tides here, make the difference, and, and get them in the end zone for, for the first time in, in what has been a very long time. Yeah, Barber had an excellent game last week um, for this Vancouver team. And we see a turnover near the end zone. That's your man, Henry Fan. A quick throw into the end zone, or just short of it, as that's number 22, Klein. He has a man that's Bailey for a score, and an excellent defensive effort by Fan. He's really, he's really pouring out there on defense, Bert. Yeah, Vancouver, Vancouver just is, is beside themselves right now. They, they haven't been able to connect on the deep shots. Because of that, it looks, like, uh, it looks like Seattle's content to just really start to pressure the unders now and give them and give them really no options to look at other than moving the disc side to side. And this Vancouver team has no answers right now. And that is, I believe it was 5-5 five, five at one point. Yeah, it was 5-5 five, five at one point. So that's six straight points for Seattle, Bert. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like the wheels are coming off a bit on, on Vancouver. And as we said, you know, in the beginning of this game, Vancouver is a team that if you let them stick around, they can be a nuisance. But if you take them out early... Uh, they do tend to cave in on themselves a little bit, and that's looking like what's, what's happening out there. As, yep, as Seattle's pointing left to right. They were down 3-0 early on in this game, Bert. Now they're up 11-5, to really putting the pressure on this Vancouver team. As we see a big turnover there. They just cannot seem to stop the bleeding right now. Yeah, just a lot of silly mistakes. Just looked like a wide-open catch there for Whitney Brown, too. Now a throw towards the end zone. A layout, and that's going to be a turnover. Let's see if Vancouver can take over here and take advantage. But there's going to be a call. Seems to be a, a bit of a contact foul on that break side backhand. You see them a lot. Uh, it's a tough throw. It's a tough throw to, to stop without, without creating a little bit of contact. Yeah, and it certainly had an effect on the throw as Rupp dumps it to Fan. And a Fan with a quick backhand in the end zone. A leap and a grab and a score for Robin Breen. A nice sky over his man there, Bert. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the kind of that's the kind of throw that that uh, that Henry Fan has has become known for that that final throw in the final third. That's normally a little creative, out to space, and and really deadly effective when it's on. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. Not uh, yeah, it's going to be by Vancouver as Seattle has scored the last seven points here in this game. Um, things really falling apart for them, Bert. Yeah, I, Vancouver is, is taking a timeout here for no other reason than to calm down the team. It actually looks like actually, Seattle's no, setting Seattle's up for a half-field pull, so it, it might be their timeout. But, but either way, Vancouver's offensive ability, both by their traditional O-line and really anyone else they're throwing out there, uh, has been inept, to say the least, since the first quarter. Mm -hmm. They've just been unable to get anything done against the Seattle defense, and Seattle is starting to figure out what they want to do, the only things that they are comfortable doing, and they're starting to take those away as well. So uh, let's hope that Vancouver can make, make enough adjustments and get a little bit of confidence and, and get the hold here. Yeah, but Seattle's really looking to, to put the nail in the coffin here with this half field pull as it goes into the end zone. Vancouver trying to get it out of the end zone. Poachy defense from Seattle. I don't really understand what they were doing with that there, Bert. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems to be their strategy, not just – on their half field pulls, but throughout the entire game, they're they're very content with with letting dumps and resets happen, but it's paying off for them. So I can't <laughs> I can't really yeah. complain. They're the Vancouver team is playing right into their hands and giving them everything they that they want, and which is which is the disc, right? Mm -hmm. They're just giving it to them. They're not they're not having to do too much to get their turnovers. No, as this is a Vancouver team and an offense that struggled all game, they have just two holds with uh, we're, and we're all almost about halfway through the third quarter here, Bert. As a, an excellent layout D there for Seattle. That's number eight, Dylan Harrington. They'll look to push it here. Seattle is so impressive with the way that they just lull you to sleep and let you think, oh, as we see a drop, they, they, <laughs> they let you think that you have these open in cuts, and then they just attack. And, and a throw that you've gotten off four or five times before is suddenly not there. Yeah, and an unfortunate turnover there for them. As now Vancouver sends off a huck, a sliding grab, and a catch there. And it's going to be a score. That's number six uh, in the end zone for the score, Ted Chu. But a nice sliding grab there to keep it alive, Bert. Yeah, I, I, 
Definitely thought that might have that might have hit the ground a little bit the way it popped up, but the referee had the had the best look on it, called it up. They uh, had the numbers in the end zone and were able to punch it in. Finally, hopefully this gets this Vancouver team back on track, gets their D line that has been generating some turns out there, and uh, they can they can start to close in on this gap a little bit. Yeah, that is a, a Vancouver score. It's their first score since the 5:39 mark in the second quarter, so it's been quite some time since they found the end zone, Bert. They now trail Seattle 12-6 with uh, just under five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. As we see them taking a timeout to, to uh, use, utilize this half-field pole, um, Seattle's been very effective with it thus far in this game. Let's see if Vancouver could utilize it to their strength. Absolutely, and Vancouver does a completely uh, different strategy than Seattle in this circumstance. They like to be uh, you know, highly aggressive on their resets and, and force some, some difficult upfield throws right off the bat, whereas Seattle has – has been okay with with letting space off to the sides and then and then closing in on on the easy throws that Vancouver has found success with in the past. So so it should be it should be you know successful half field pull for them and I think they need it to be if they want to get back into this game. Yeah, we've seen them early on in this game when they had the other team in their own end zone with a lot of double teams on the mark. Let's see if they try to use that here. As they do, they double team the mark. What a nice scuba there as Hauser takes the disc. Hauser up to Gusson. Gusson has a man. That's Greeley. Greeley double teamed. But he finds the wide open man, Hauser. Hauser's flick to a, a layout grab by number two, Ostergaard. And he's in for the score. What a grab there, Bert. Hauser to Ostergaard, two players this year. Seattle has, uh, has come to rely on that they didn't last year. Beautiful inside-out flick huck and Ostergaard showing off his athleticism. Yeah, and it looked like he did an excellent job of uh, keeping his toe off the ground to, uh, to end up with the score there. As, it's, as we're just getting some weather updates, it's pouring rain. If, I don't know if you could see on your screen. It's really coming down there in Seattle, Bert. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, there's times where you can't even tell it's raining, and then other times it, it, it seems like it's monsooning. But it looks to be consistent. These players are really fighting, fighting through that weather right now. Uh, it's making everything more difficult, and Seattle's proving to be more capable of handling the, uh, the conditions in Vancouver so far. Yeah, Seattle really handled that uh, short field pull well. They got down the field in just 25 seconds. Now they'll pull right to left on your screen. We'll see this Vancouver offense that has just three holds so far in this game. They'll take over. And then a poor throw right off the bat, and it's going to be a turnover right in front of the Vancouver end zone. Let's see if Seattle can capitalize, Bert. Yeah, you know, it's tough to be turning the disc over, specifically tough to be turning the disc over on your own end zone. As Fan has a dump. Back to Fan. Fan with a floaty flick. It's low, but an excellent layout grab by number zero, Chris Rupp, for a score. So back-to-back -back layout grabs, and Seattle is just bringing the effort here, Bert. Absolutely. This, this is the type of offense they like to, like to be playing. Like I said before, you can't turn the disc over near your own end zone and expect good results. There's just too much width on an MLU field to, to utilize for these offenses, and it makes it just too easy. Henry Fan, one of the best in the league at being able to throw what I call sitters, just just throws out to space that seemingly just hover above the ground in one mm -hmm. spot. And they're so ideal on this field with that much space, so easy to run onto, and Rupp having plenty of time to really line up his layout there and get an easy score. Yeah, it was a good job, like kind of a give and go there, Bert, where Rupp started with the disc, just dropped it right back to Fan, and then ran to the open side for an easy score. Yeah, and, and like I said, Henry, so good at just at just being able to put out something light to space, uh, and it makes it very difficult for, for defenders. Yeah, as you look at Fan's uh, his stat line in this game, he's got a goal, two assists, and two blocks. So he had those turnovers early on, but he's really making up for it here in the second half. As Vancouver, they'll work the disc. That's low with it. This offense has had trouble all game long. Fan... Marking Brown. Now Brown hits low. Low. Back over to Brown. Brown fakes a flick. Yeah, now, Seattle. Seattle going with a with a bit of a of a force middle mark for a second there, and now they're going to the sideline. Definitely switching up the 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 mark, making it very difficult on this Nighthawks team to figure out where their passing lanes are. Yeah, and a very difficult dump throw there as. Nadon comes away with it, but Vancouver, it seems they're going the wrong way on almost every throw here, Bert. Has a low throw there. Handled well by Chang. Chang, marked tightly. It looks like one of the things the Nighthawks are hoping to do 
uh, to to open up this their offense a little bit has been moving Victor Chang a little bit farther downfield. So far, it's been ineffective, but you can see that he, that you know so a player typically used to being around the disc. He's trying to to work and operate in that 10 to 15 yard space upfield as a bit of an initiator for this offense. Yeah, trying to change it up. Try you know got to try something new as they've really struggled here on offense as Nadon works it around to Whitney Brown. And Seattle's doing a tremendous job of containing these throws, Bert. Yeah, they're like I said before, they are just content. And an excellent layout effort there on defense for number 22, Evan Klein. Yeah, like I, said, like I was about to say, they're just content to let you get easy throw sideline to sideline. And as soon as you try something that, uh, that has some serious consequences in terms of yards upfield, they are all over it. Yeah, Vancouver, you know, they had a lot of throws on that possession but really weren't going anywhere with it, like you were saying. And they, uh, Seattle's just doing an excellent job of forcing those turnovers as a low throw goes off, and it looks like he just slipped out of his hand. Is that the rain could be a yeah, factor here? It looks Bert? like the rain got got a, got a little bit more of that one than he anticipated. Almost zero rotation on that forehand. Now Victor Chang will pick it up for Vancouver. Chang with the flick. He hits Nate on. Nate on now. Big backhand, but it's not going to have enough as it's deed there. My number 13, Drew Lockhart. And I think we're going to get a call here. You know, it's. That's a good thing because Vancouver has had zero luck with any of their deep attempts this game. The disc just hasn't been able to get uh, any sort of lift on it or distance. And they need to start stretching the field a little bit if they want to get back into this because Seattle is closing down on, on their, their standard offensive looks. Yeah, and I think we're going to get a timeout here, Bert. Um, so they're going to discuss a little bit of strategy here. What, what is Vancouver uh, talking about in this timeout? I think Vancouver's probably... Talking about everything that we've been discussing here on the on on our broadcast, they they need to just be patient with the disc and understand that Seattle is is letting them reset the disc when they want to. So if they if they can work hard work hard to get open at ten to fifteen yards downfield, they can get the disc closer to the end zone and begin to to utilize that width that we've talked a lot about. That Seattle's doing a great job of doing this game. Yeah. Unfortunately, they keep trying to stretch the field deep and. Whether it's the rain, the wind, or talent, they just haven't been able to get the job done and connect on those deep throws. Yeah, the weather's certainly being more of a factor than it was at the beginning of the game. It's going to make it a little tough for Vancouver to try to get back into this one. Uh, I'd like to take this time to uh, remind you this broadcast is brought to you by U.S. Coachways. Do you have a team trip or a corporate outing coming up? If so, charter a private bus, minibus, or party bus from busrental.com, a U.S. Coachways company. Bus travel is one of the safest, greenest, and most affordable ways to get your group to an event. If you're going with a group, trust busrental.com. Enter coupon code MLUBUS and get additional savings and VIP treatment. This broadcast is also brought to you by Canterbury, the performance apparel partner to Major League Ultimate. Visit www.canterburyus.com today, the destination for your team's custom uniforms. Canterbury, committed to Ultimate. As we see Vancouver break from the huddle here, 147 remaining in the third quarter. And just like we saw earlier, the Vancouver has decided that their offense that they that they typically like to throw out is just unable to get the job done and they and they're replacing everybody with some fresh blood here, hopefully to give Seattle's defense some different threats to look at, uh, some some players they're less accustomed to facing and and hopefully that that works out well for them. Yeah, a lot of their D-line players uh, who we saw get those three breaks early on. Coincidentally, Vancouver doesn't have a break since those three breaks in this game. Does that have to do with fatigue, Bert, and these guys having to play a lot of points? I think Vancouver was fortunate to get a lot of early turnovers. As we see, a really incredible hand block there by, by number 20, Luke Jesperson. Uh, but I think, are they going to call it a foul? They might be calling it a foul. Wow, yeah, it looks like they are calling a foul on it. Um, yeah, I, I think Vancouver got, got fortunate in the beginning. Seattle wasn't yet accustomed to the conditions. And we're going to see another turnover here for Vancouver. As Seattle certainly has become accustomed to the condition. Oh, and then we're going to get another foul. Yeah, that's really the story of this game for me. Seattle got accustomed to conditions, comfortable playing in the rain. Meanwhile, Vancouver uh, got less and less comfortable as the game went on. Yeah, as Vancouver struggled, but they'll work it here. A throw goes up into the end zone, and that's going to be a score for the Nighthawks. They're on the board. That makes the score 14-7 in favor of Seattle. So that's just their fourth hold here, uh, Bert. Yeah, and, and they're hoping to see more of the same. I think something to look for going forward will be what kind of offense 
Vancouver deploys. It seems like their last couple of points, either on offense getting holds or on defense getting breaks, have come from their defensive players and not from the seven players they typically expect to hold down the fort. Um, so it should be interesting to see if they if they go with these new look O lines going forward and probably sprinkle in their their Taylor Nadons and their Eric Hunters on those lines, or if they if they go back to what they have for most of the season on the offensive line. And so we're going to get a timeout here. Uh, I believe it's timeout another timeout for Vancouver. Not sure if they're setting up for a ha yeah half field pull. You mentioned changing the lines around, Bert. Does that? Uh, affect though the way that these teams play, uh, this team will play defensively having to take a, a lot of players who've played a lot of defensive points and then throw them onto the offensive line? Yeah, I think there's there's a ton of things to consider here. Obviously, like you said these players who, who are typically part of a rotation on defense are going to be asked to play more points if they're playing on offense. Um, additionally something that would be interesting to see is uh, is how Vancouver or how Seattle reacts to, to this new look that they're giving the team uh, offensively, because in the MLU, typically you'll have eight or nine players, sometimes even as low as seven, that you that you like to throw out as an offensive line, and that's a conventional thought, and that allows defenses as the game goes on to understand different players' tendencies. So by by switching it up and giving them different looks and players who who probably are are succeeding at different things uh, throughout the game, that will keep that will keep Seattle's defense on its heels, or yes, at least sir. you hope it will. Certainly want to change things up if you're Vancouver because not much has worked for you early on in this game. As they'll pull from half field, they try to force a turnover. They got a lot of men trying to pressure the handler here. As a fake there. Seattle working in their own end zone. Stall counts really getting up there on Gusson. Gusson with a dump. Has his man. And now a scuba back over to Gusson. Gusson toes the sideline. He's doubled, though. He looks for a backhand now. Puts up a blady flick. It's going to be contested, and it's going to be a turnover, and that's exactly what you wanted for uh, if you're Vancouver out of that, uh, that half-field pull here. as a low throw, but number six corrals it. That's Ted Shue, gets it off to a man. And Graham Barber, the guy you like to see, with the nice scuba there. Yeah, and that's number 19, Nathan Lamb with the score. An excellent leap and a grab, and Vancouver has back-to-back -back points for the first time since the first quarter, Bert. Yeah, and you can hope they, you hope to see them build on this. Great job of uh, of utilizing that half that half pull to to get the turnover. Seattle had nowhere to go; they were stuck on their sideline. Had to throw up something blady, which is ex something blady and contested, which is exactly what you want. And as we said in the beginning of the game, if anyone's going to help this D line score, it is Graham Barber, and he has the throw to unlock the defense there in the final third. Yeah, we saw that that scuba go up. A little bit of a questionable throw, but with five seconds remaining in the third quarter, I guess he could get away with that uh, scuba into traffic. Bert. Absolutely, and and it and it was on the break side. Although although they the disc was set up on the break side, that was where the most space was. So if you were going to be able to get away with a, with a scuba that was going to hang like that, that's that's really the place where it was going to happen. Yeah, and an excellent grab there by his man, Nathan Lamb, able to go up for it and come down with it in the end zone as Vancouver sends the pull off, short pull. As a huck goes up in the, towards the end zone, it looks like it's going to just be short and it's going to get deed. No score here for Seattle, and that's going to do it in the third quarter. Yeah, very interesting way to uh, block that by Vancouver by hitting it into the end zone. They're fortunate that, that there wasn't a, a hustle play on that disc. Yeah, uh, definitely got lucky with that one. So that's going to do it at the third quarter. Uh, score 14-8 in favor of the Raymakers. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action here at MLU Live. That was an incredible game to watch. It was a huge loss. I just decided to launch and try to get it. I knew if I went up early enough, I could get it. And all of a sudden, there are feet kind of above heads. Does it all come back to this loss? Does it all come back to this play? If I had four hands, I would put all four hands on it up the other line. They had to deliver. Boston kept doing this thing that you didn't think was possible. The team in is just to have as much fun as possible. It's an experience, man. You turn around and you look and there's this big giant animal running towards you. When I first started commentating, it was kind of tough for me because it's like, well, it's, I can be out there too. I can play with these guys. Well, why am I up here in the booth? Jeff Grant is, is he's a freaking monster. Uh, he can sort of just do it all, you know? A few of my students were like, we saw you on the bus. I was like, I don't ride the bus. No, you were on the side of the bus.
are back here just before the fourth quarter with MLU Live. I'm Chris Markowitz alongside Bert Katzen. Bert, we've seen this Vancouver Nighthawks team struggle on offense. Do you want to talk a little bit about their struggles here? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, 14-8, to eight, definitely not what the Nighthawks would be looking for going into the fourth quarter. But honestly, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, interesting stat for me going into the fourth quarter is Vancouver's first hold scoring efficiency. So their first hold scoring efficiency is essentially the, the uh, percentage of time that they score their first hold opportunity without turning the disc over. And going into the fourth quarter, that is at 0%. Not one time throughout this entire game has the offense punched it in without turning it over. They only have four holds on the game, and that's really done, it, done them in so far. Well, you know, you talk, you know, they've really struggled on offense, but you got to give a lot of credit to this Seattle defense. They have 10 blocks in this game, two from Henry Fan, three from Chris Rupp. So it's a combination of the fact that Vancouver's really been struggling with some turnovers, but an excellent effort from the Rainmakers here today, Bert. Yeah, the Rainmakers uh, came out here with a, with a strategy and with a scheme and have not shot away from it once, and it's yielding excellent results for them. Going into the last minute of, of that third quarter, they had outscored rain, the Rainmakers, or excuse me, the, the Nighthawks 11 to 2. The Nighthawks got two quick breaks there to end the quarter, uh, or two quick points there, mm -hmm. excuse me, to, uh, to end the quarter to make, this, to make this look a little bit more respectable. But it has been all Seattle since the end of the first quarter here. Yeah, it's really been, it's, yeah, it's really been all Seattle since uh, the Nighthawks got their third break in a row to start this game. Yeah, Seattle, Seattle was able to calm their nerves. They knew that they liked the strategy they had. They didn't, they, they didn't knee-jerk react to, to those first three breaks and, and scrap their plan. They stuck with it, and it is definitely paying dividends now going into the fourth quarter. Now, Vancouver was able to execute on the last two plays of that third quarter. They cut the lead to six. Um, what are some things you'd like to see from them to maybe try to get back into this game? Uh, for starters, I'd like to see a lot more of Graham Barber. Graham Barber's, you know, he's played nine points this game, which isn't isn't too few or too many, but I think getting him more involved on the offensive line as well as the defensive line, have him start playing both ways to give another uh, experienced presence behind the disc while you have Eric Hunter and Nadon operating upfield would, would really help out this team that's, that's had, like I said, extreme difficulty in holding onto the disc mm -hmm. and scoring without turning the disc over. Yeah, you've been mentioning that a lot. Uh, Vancouver will look to maybe mix up their lines on offense, but they'll start here on defense. They'll pull right to left on your screen as that pull will travel out of, out of the field. It's going to be a brick here. It's Rupp. He'll go to retrieve the disc for Seattle. He'll move it to the middle of the field, as is the rule. The referee signals for where... Yeah, and if, and if Vancouver wants to get back in this game, it's got to happen right now. It's, they've got to start getting really aggressive uh, on their downfield options and, and start generating some turnovers. As, yeah, as we saw them getting a little aggressive on that dump there defensively, but they let it off, and now Seattle working the far sideline. That's Gusson. Gusson looking to a dump. He has his dump. That's Feely. Excuse me, Greeley with it. Now Greeley over to Rupp. Rupp now. Has a man on a sliding grab. That's Breen. Breen with a couple flick fakes. He looks for a dump now. Has Rupp. Rupp now on the close sideline. Fake flick. Now he's looking. Hammer. And hammer to the dump there, Bert. Yeah, Vancouver's doing a great job thus far of disrupting uh, the downfield resets. Um, hopefully they can generate a turn off of it. That's obviously the plan. Let's see if they can do it. Yep, as now Seattle working the far sideline. That's number 23, Silva, over to Gusson. Gusson now with a mark, kind of a, kind of a midfield mark there, forced middle almost. A nice sliding grab there by Hauser. Hauser hits a man. That's number 32, over to Hauser, and a score for Hauser, and that puts Seattle up seven. Yeah, and in Vancouver, like I said, being very aggressive on the resets, and when you do that, you always leave yourself vulnerable for upline cuts, and that's exactly how we saw Seattle move the disc up the field there over the last 30 or 40 yards. Yeah, Hauser did an excellent job there with his cuts. He got a score. I believe that is his second goal of the game. He's the leading goal scorer for the Seattle team, really having a great season for them. Uh, he has an assist, so with those three points he has here today, he's got 30 points on the season, Bert. Yeah, congratulations to him. 
definitely a, a a breakout of the year candidate for Seattle. Last year, he was you know part of the faceless army of this team, just one of the many deep players that they had that was that was sort of living in in Mark Burton's shadow offensively. Ostergaard being another one, and this mm-hmm. year we've seen Hauser really break out and be that value that valuable deep threat and uh, and downfield cutter for, for Seattle. Yeah, he's got 19 goals this year, season. That leads this Rainmakers team as their pull travels right to left on your screen. High, floaty pull. And that one, too, will go out of bounds in the same area as the last pull for Vancouver went out of bounds So as they'll move it to the middle of the field. And right away we see Graham Barber on the first offensive possession for Vancouver in this quarter, along with Taylor Nadun and a couple of defensive players. Yeah, Vancouver mixing it up on offense. A blady flick and a turnover on the first throw, Bert. Yeah, looking for his buddy Eric Hunter there. And uh and unfortunate unfortunate, unfortunate error. You know, I like to I like to look smart when I say I want Graham Barber out there. He's gonna make the difference on the O line and instantly he turns it over. <laughs> yep. It's but it's been everyone really for this Vancouver team, unfortunately, today. As Seattle takes their time, they'll work it in for an easy score. And they'll take an eight-point lead. They've doubled Vancouver in points here with just 18 remaining in the fourth quarter. Seattle is not the team you you can expect to be giving the disc to often and not have them convert on you. Uh, You know, we talked about it earlier in the game. We talked about it before the game. This is a team that scoring that scoring efficiency wise is is good at all, a good a little bit above average on offense and scoring efficiency and well above average in yep. defensive scoring efficiency which really speaks to their well-rounded nature of their players and and Vancouver you know it's almost a recipe for for disaster for them they they like to take their chances and they do turn the disc over a lot and Seattle is is making them pay as they have all season yeah coming into this game they actually had a better defensive scoring efficiency than the Portland Stags which is kind of surprising considering how great of a season the Stags defense has had um but, you know, Seattle has done an excellent job all game long here today in uh, playing defense on this Vancouver team, locking them down. Just a lot of breaks here uh, and an excellent job of fighting back from that, that 3 nothing deficit they faced early on in the first quarter. They've really taken a stranglehold of this game, and they'll send it off left to right here on this sh- uh, short field pull. This could kind of be the exclamation point here, Bert. Yeah, yeah, this could definitely add insult to injury, and looks like that one's getting away from them and putting – uh, Vancouver in the coffin corner. Dangerous throw goes up, but it's handled well there. And now a throw out of the end zone, but it's going to be a turnover. Seattle got what they wanted out of that one, and it'll look to get a quick score. And they do. A nice d- job there of toe-tapping from Eddie Feely for the score, Bert. Yeah, definitely uh, smart awareness by Eddie Feely. He knew that if he, uh, if he, if he kept that one foot down before, before stepping back out of the end zone, that it could, it could be a goal. Great awareness. Uh, you you never want to do that too often, just because you know you're taught to attack the disc and not leave the defender a chance. But he was he was aware of his surroundings, knew he had the space and the time to to leave his feet in the end zone there, and easy easy break opportunity again for Seattle. Yeah, they're they really exactly, running away with it. Yep, they got exactly what they wanted out of the short pull. They have a 17 to 8 lead here over the Nighthawks, 7:58 remaining in the quarter. Was that a bit, was that the nail in the coffin there, Bert? I hate to you say it's so early in the fourth quarter, but was. It, nine points is kind of hard to come back from considering Vancouver's only scored eight so far in this game. And Vancouver's out of timeouts. They're going to need a miracle uh, to get back into this one. And it's got to start here with their offense by doing its job. You know, you have the disc. You have an inherent advantage by having the disc. Go out there and score. Yeah, let's see if they can get it done here. As Victor Chang with it. A blady throw. Hits his man, Barbieri. Barbieri with no one on him. Swings it to Nadon. Nadon over to his man. That's Whitney Brown. Hits it on the sideline. Now has Barbieri. Barbieri with the backhand. He hits a man. That's Chang. Chang with a nice grab there. Has a man open on the far sideline. Back to a dump. Now over to the middle. A fake flick there. Whitney Brown over to Nadon. Nadon back to Brown on a high release backhand. He swings it back to Nadon. Now he'll go up line, but Nadon looks him off. Nadon with a dump. It's not a lot of activity going on downfield for Vancouver once they get near the end zone. And we've seen that all game long, uh, Bert, as Nadon has it now. He puts up a hammer into the end zone, and that's going to be his score. 
That's number five, Ty Barbieri on the other end, and that is a sweet throw for Nate on, Bert. Yeah, great throw by Nate on there, and I have a huge smile on my face here. Vancouver has done it. They have scored on a hold without turning the disc over. Yeah, it's the first time they did it all game long, and it's the 6.58 mark here in the fourth, so it took them a while, but they finally got that, uh, that uncontested hold. Yeah, yeah, and... and you know, it, it's it's good that they were able to to find that break side because there wasn't a lot of activity downfield on the four side. Ty Barbieri, one of their more experienced players, able to uh, to connect with with Nate on there on a on a beautiful hammer. Yeah, it was an excellent throw uh, right out right out in the space, right where his cutter needed it, and uh, Vancouver was able to come away with the score, cut the lead back to eight for Seattle. And they'll send it off right to left on your screen. 6.48 remaining in the quarter. A nice pull here from Vancouver. A lot of hang time to it. Looks like it's going to be just short of the end zone as Seattle takes over. Yeah, and, and even with that hang time, Vancouver pretty slow to get downfield. Yeah, we've seen that them struggle a little bit defensively here. But Seattle's just done a great job both offensively and defensively in this game as they're working it here now. Throw it in the middle of the field. A nice grab there by Ostergaard in traffic. And I think they're going to give him a foul call as well. Yeah, a little bit of contact after the catch there. But he was able to hang on to it anyway, Bert. And now he puts up a blady flick to the end zone. But a leaping grab by Hauser. That's an incredible catch for the score, Bert. Great catch there. And Ostergaard and Hauser connecting yet again. These two have really been a joy to watch. Yeah, we're getting used to saying their names quite a lot here. And what a way to reach 20 goals on the season for Hauser. That was an incredible leap in the end zone for a score, Bert. Yeah, a team that, that as I said a couple times earlier, had become pretty reliant on Khalif and Mark Burton. Obviously, Mark Burton moving on. Khalif not here today. Hauser has really picked up the slack for this Nighthawks team this year. Or, sorry, <laughs> Rainmakers team this year. That's all right, Bert. Yeah, we've, we've seen a great, excellent effort from Hauser here today. He's, got a, he's responsible for five points for Seattle today. Um, Seattle's up 18-9, 6-20 remaining in the quarter. They're going to take their final time out here and uh, try to pin Vancouver in their own, own end zone once again. Yeah, adding a bit of insult to injury here, but you, know, you want to use all your timeouts. You've got three. So this could, uh, this could really, really put the game away even more so than it already is. The Nighthawks, obviously, if they want to they get back into it, are going to need a hold here as well as a lot of magic from their D1. Now, Seattle doesn't really need this break that desperately. Is this more of a, uh, a point differential type of strategy move here, Bert? Uh, I mean, it's a professional game, and, and you, know, you don't want to show mercy to your opponent. They have the timeout to use. Uh, this, is, this seemingly has been the way that they've used their timeouts all year as opposed to substitution and full line switches. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at this point, it's just, it's just good practice to get, get, uh, get used to these situations. As we see a high floaty pole here in the end zone, yeah, certainly you, know, you want to be able to practice these kinds of scenarios if you can. And now a flick huck down the field, got flow to it, a leap and a D there for number eight, Dylan Harrington, and Seattle's going to take over yet again here. Yeah, I... I I'm curious to see how many deep shots Vancouver has connected on. There's only one I can think of, and it was a, a sliding effort by them. The deep looks have just not been on. They've either hung too long or not long enough, and, and they just haven't been able to get it. Deep. And now a deep shot to Harrington, and he can't come away with it for the bookends. So Seattle will turn it over, and Vancouver is going to take over right in their own end zone. Now, Nate on, no one on him. As you mentioned, this t Vancouver team, Bird, has struggled all game long and really all season long with putting it deep. That's an area they don't do too well in. And now that hammer from Nadon just too high and it's going to be a turnover. Unless we have another foul call here. Yeah, it looks like there was a little bit of contact there, but in general that hammer definitely got away from Nadon and was, it was not read well. Yeah, that was, uh, I believe number 38 Stelk was the intended receiver. They're going to give him the foul, so it'll go to the spot of the foul. So Stuck with the disc now, looking upfield. Now he has a man on an in cut. That's Davidson. Davidson to low. Oh, he bobbles it but comes away with it. A nice grab there. And now a nice grab there by Victor Chang as he lays out and had to reach back for it. Nate on with the disc now. Vancouver working it. A couple close calls for here for them on this possession. But Nate on hits Whitney Brown. He has a man. That's Stelk. Stelk with a big fake. Back to Whitney Brown. Excuse me, that was Davidson, not Stelk. As Whitney Brown works it. Now on the far sideline. 
Nate on to Chang. Chang with a fake. Vancouver yet again taking their time. Stelk now. Gets it to a man. And are we going to get a call here? I think we're going to get a call, Bert. Yeah, Seattle being a little aggressive on those in-cuts as we've, as we've seen over the last few quarters, uh, really starting to close down and make those, those look more, looks more difficult for the Nighthawks. This one no different. I think they're okay with the foul call here. Looks like they might be giving him a band or at least a talking to. Yeah, they've got a lot of fouls here today do the, uh, do the Rainmakers, but they also have a lot of blocks, so those kind of go hand-in-hand, hand, Bert. Yeah, and fouls can give you a psychological advantage regardless, regardless of, uh, of obviously, you know, you're giving up yards in those situations. It, it makes offenses a little bit more hesitant to try certain things. As we see another layout there, speaking of fouls, but Nadon is able to come away with it with the con contact and get the score to get Vancouver their 10th point of the game. Yeah, Nadon doing a great job of using his body there to shield the defender from uh, any potential block and, and get the score. Yeah, really just used his size there, boxed out his man. But, uh, you know, an excellent defensive effort there a couple times from Seattle on a few layouts. Weren't able to come away with it, but they've really been able to get a lot of those blocks here in this game so far. That's a big reason why they're up by eight points. So with 351 remaining in the quarter, Seattle's up 18-10 to 10 over the Nighthawks. Vancouver's going to pull right to left on your screen. Pull. Travels right to left. It's high. Got a lot of flow to it. See if Vancouver could get down on this one quickly. They do. Seattle takes over. Looking at it quickly as Hauser... Puts up a flick huck down the field. Has an open man. It's going to float. But an excellent defensive effort there from Vancouver. That's number 32, Michael E. with it. But I think they're going to say a strip. Yeah, yeah, at the very least a foul call. Uh, it's tough to, tough to say there. You, you like to err on the side of the referees. Uh, they have a better perspective on that than we do. But, but definitely a great job, a great job uh, by Vancouver, regardless of, of – doing their best to contest that throw. Yeah, I thought, I thought he might have gotten that one cleanly, but, you know, can't argue with the referee, I guess. As Seattle takes over in front of their own end zone, and it's going to be a quick score to Hauser. Uh, he's been doing it all game long, and he just continues to do it here late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and tough to blame Jazz Groden Gilchrist there to defend her on Hauser. Uh, it's so, so hard to keep the disc from that break side. Obviously, Hauser, when the disc is going over to that break side, he already has a one or two step advantage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you'd like to see your mark make it more difficult of a throw there. That just was too floaty, too easy for, for Hauser. Yeah, just a, you know, tough one to throw there, for, uh, to guard there for Groden Gilchrist. But uh, an excellent cut for Hauser. He's really making his impact not only on this, on this game for his team, but uh, on fantasy leagues this year, Bert. Yeah, absolutely. I sure wish he was on my team. Um, <laughs> that's, he's been doing, he's been doing really a great job this year. And every year it seems like, uh, you know, different people have to step up and answer the call for a lot of our teams. And Hauser's just another one of those examples of, of being put in the right situation in an offense to really showcase his talent. Yeah. Really coming out of, uh, coming into his own this season. This is a Seattle team with a lot of weapons. They don't even have their best player, uh, in, in Khalif here. So, you know, they're building a lot of momentum. They've won four games in a row for a reason. And they look like they're on their way to their fifth win in a row as Vancouver's working it here now. Victor Chang on the close sideline. He puts up a flick, has a man Nate on. Nate on with a fake. Nate on, high release, has a man over to the middle of the field. Oh, nearly dropped there, but a good job of corralling it. Now throw it to the end zone, just too low, and that's going to be another turnover for Vancouver. Yeah, again, it's it's – it's almost weird to see uh, the difference in downfield throws from both these teams. Seattle's able to put things out far to space with some, with some nice air underneath it, but it seems like every time Vancouver's tried to take deep shots downfield, they've just executed them poorly. They've been too low and uh, too inaccurate. Yeah, we haven't seen any of their deep shots really uh, been converted on. As Seattle working it now, Fan hits a man on the far sideline. Now flick to the far sideline. That's Evan Klein. Klein with a laser beam hits his man right in front of the end zone and now throw into the end zone for a score. That's number eight, Dilling Harrington with the grab. Yeah, and, C and Seattle is just feeling it now. I don't, I don't think that was uh, 
the throw that Klein was meaning to throw, but but uh, it got plucked right out of the air and, and thrown for the continuation for an easy score. And it seems like it's just one of those days for Seattle. Nothing can go wrong for them, and really nothing can go right here uh, for this Vancouver Nighthawks team. Yeah, Seattle's really starting to separate themselves as uh, Portland's contender this season. Um, you know, between last week's game against San Francisco, where, again, they, they had a, a very convincing win and then coming into Vancouver and having another convincing convincing win, uh, I feel safe saying that they're going to win this one, Chris. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 10 with two minutes I think left. a 10-point lead with 2.06 left is a safe margin. Yeah, yeah. So, so really, they do have two more games against the Dogfish this season that could, that could give them the trouble and add a little bit more parity. But so far over the last two weeks, they've really started to separate themselves as the, as the contender to Portland in the West. Yeah, the Dogfish are 1-5, I believe, on the season. So... A victory here today would almost basically secure that second playoff spot out in the West for this Seattle Rainmakers team. As Vancouver takes over with the disc here, two minutes remaining and a, another drop there for Vancouver. Really the story of this game for the Nighthawks, Bert. Yeah, it looks like their head's just not in it right now, Chris. Uh, like, like a lot of d turnovers in the past for this team, not really any pressure on that one, just a simple execution error. Yep, not a... Not a good turnover for them as Rupp throws it in the end zone, but it's going to get deed. It was Fan, his intended receiver, but a nice defensive effort there from Vancouver. I believe that was Chang with the effort as he's running away. I can't read the number. So a minute 26 remaining as the clock is winding down. Vancouver trails here by 10 to Seattle. Yeah, and that was Nicholas Lynn on the defense. Just got a light piece of that, of that upline throw. Yep, and now the throw on the far sideline. Wide open man for Vancouver. They're working it quickly here. A backhand around to a dump. Big fake there. Now a flick. Two open receivers for Vancouver. Oh, but that's going to be Deed. And another turnover for Vancouver. Yeah, nope. and, and you could just see the pressure building on Nicholas Lynn there. Seeing the open man in the end zone and just wanting so badly to push it in. And uh, it was a smart play there. That was Klein. I by Evan Klein, yeah, deep. just... Just knowing that this young team will do anything to just get something into the end zone at this point and coming away with the, with the costly turnover. Yep, it's a you know costly turnover, but this game's really in the bag as we have just 32 seconds remaining. And that flick just fell right out of the hands of the, the Seattle Rainmaker player. I believe I couldn't read the jersey number on that turn. Vancouver takes over with 20 seconds remaining. That was Luke Jesperson. It looks like it just slipped out of his hand. It actually hit the defender in, in, in the arm and then the face. It was a, an interesting ricochet. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those kinds of throws here, Bert. It's definitely, you know, the rain has an effect on those uh, maybe a fakes or just big throws as the final seconds wind down here. And we're going to get a score, I believe, by number 13. That is Kevin Chu with the score, and that's going to do it, though. That's going to, our final, so our final score here in Vancouver, 20-11 to 11 in favor of the Vancouver. Now, actually, are they putting two seconds back on the clock here, Bert? Yeah, two seconds back on the clock. I would, I would you know, be very surprised to see Seattle try and put one into the end zone here. They're probably just going to, going to catch it and let this game run out. It's a bit of a formality at this point uh, just, to, just to get this last last one over with but you could see on that on that possession a little bit downfield on on the type of of uh, poachy defense that Seattle's been utilizing throughout just making making the throwing lanes very difficult in the middle of the field pushing the Vancouver uh, receivers wide and then and then uh, you know coming up with with costly turnovers there yep we've seen it's been an excellent defensive effort from this Rainmakers team we saw them go down three nothing early in the first quarter they turned it over on their fourth offensive possession it looked like they were going to be broken four straight times, but they were able to get the disc back and go on a 20-8 to eight run since that 3-0 uh, deficit, Bert. They really look like a strong contender out west as the two seconds will run off the clock, and that's going to do it. So the final score in Vancouver, the Seattle Raymakers 20, the Vancouver Nighthawks 11. The Raymakers go to 5-2, and two, the Nighthawks fall to 1-7. and seven. Um, it's, it was a tight game early on, but kind of just got away from the Nighthawks. And that's going to do it for us here at MLU. I'm Chris Markowitz. Bert, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Statement game from Seattle. Looking forward to see how the rest of the West plays out. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in, and have an excellent night.